Center. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this. Don't go away. We're back live in Logan, Utah, as we are awaiting the kickoff. They uh, did have the traditional coin toss, and Craig, how to give us those results? <laughs> well, actually, what happened was the USL, Ragin' Cajuns, and we're calling that a lot tonight, USL, uh, won the toss and elected to receive. They will defend the goal to the north, to our left. The Aggies will kick off, and we'll see uh, Jake DeLome right away, their sophomore quarterback, who became their starter in the first game of last year, which was against Utah State, after they tried three other quarterbacks and settled on him. Which brings us to our historical perspective that you saw on the bottom of your, of your screen. The series between these two schools goes back about 12 months. The Aggies won at uh, Southwestern Louisiana Stadium last year, a 34-13 route that was the uh, first game of the uh, of the season for the Aggies we mentioned also it really changed the Ragin Cajun offense for the rest of the season in a very positive way and that uh, they got to see how talented Jake Alone was he was able to guide them to a share of the Big West title last year just about set for the kickoff there's Mike and Nor. he will do the kicking and back deep for the Ragin Cajuns number 45 is uh, Brian Jackson and number 43 is Robert Jewell, and he's the dangerous one. Loses it in the end zone, and he will wisely put the knee down for the touchback. So the Ragin' Cajun offense steps onto the field for the first time. And first and ten. What they're going to try to do, Carlton, is run the ball. If they could run the ball effectively all night, that's what they'd be uh, looking to do, and they'd be happy about it. There's their starting offense with DeLome. Cotton and Mossick are the running backs, but you also might see number 34, Marcus Pryor, who Dick Bumpus, the coordinator, told me is their best running back. There's their starting offense front. That's a big left side of the front, a couple of 300-pounders up there. Hefty offensive line. First and 10, balls of the 20. That's Cotton in the backfield. And Cotton takes the ball up the middle. Met after a gain of about three. That's David Gill. And uh, Danilo Robinson really knifed down the line of scrimmage, number 97, one of the outside down linemen, and really made a nice play on that. There's uh, the Aggie offense or defensive front with Robinson balls, Hawk and Williams, and then the inside linebackers. Gary Brown playing a lot more now that Willie Jackson is uh, not available with the injury. Did the same thing last year when Willie went down with an injury. And they're the Aggie defensive backfield, uh, led by Donald Tuma. Second down, seven yards to go. That's the tight end, Romero, in motion. In the backfield, Mossick, he takes the pitch around the right side, finds about two yards of room before he's met by Spencer Wagner. Nice open field trip up there. Brings up a third and four situation for the Ragin' Cajuns. Well, Dick Bumpus told me if, if southwestern Louisiana was able to get into a lot of second and threes and second and fours, it could be a long day for the Aggies. Obviously, the first run was a three-yarder, making second and seven. That's, if the Aggies did that every time tonight against the running game, they would mark it a success because eventually they'd force DeLome to throw, and he's not very he's not as good at, at that as running the ball when they're effective running. Cotton back in the backfield again. DeLome rolls out and overthrows the intended receiver, Steve Mossick. Brings up a fourth down situation, so the Aggie defense has held tough here, a three-and-out situation. Brings up a punting situation, and we will get to see Kevin Alexander returning the punt for Utah State. He averages uh, just over 10 yards of return for the Aggies. Mike Jones, the punter for Southwestern Louisiana. You see his numbers there. Nearly blocked. Alexander will take it on the bounce. At about the 27-yard line to be forced out of a bound at the 30. Turns out to, to be not a good-looking punt, but probably about a 48-yarder, so it's effective for them. Always makes the return man hesitate when it hits the ball, or the ball hits the ground because of the oblong shape of the football. You never know where it's going to bounce. And you sure hate to fumble those, and Utah State has done those in each of the last four games, I believe. They have fumbled a punt and has set up a scoring drive. Now, the Aggie offense against this extremely aggressive USL defensive team, they are more aggressive than Utah State is. They will bring on most plays seven or eight people. They'll usually be in man-to-man -man coverage with three back, 
And number 42, we talked about him. Uh, there's the starting offensive lineup, by the way, for the Aggies along the front. The 42, Orlando Thomas, has freedom to do basically anything he wants. They will never hook him up, however, with a wide receiver. He may cover a back out of the backfield sometime, but... He should be making a lot of plays today. He blitzes a lot, and as we also mentioned, as we look at Wells' totals, the Aggie uh, backs, when they stay in the block, have been instructed to watch for number 42 and keep him away from Matt Wells. Seem to have a delay down on the field. I hope it's not that game clock again. Looks like we've got it straightened out. Okay, first and 10, balls on the 29-yard line. Profel Greer, the lone setback. And the receivers are Ivy Russell, Sean Turner, and Kevin Alexander all along the right side. Well, fakes to Greer, tosses over to Kevin Corner, the tight end, for a gain of about eight yards. Kevin Corner got the start today as the starting tight end. Brings up a second down and about a long two. We took the power. A little bit of misdirection there, a fake handoff in the play action. There's the uh, USL starting defense and uh, Goff actually I don't think is starting today that was a late change and then you see 42 Thomas the best of a veteran defensive secondary second down short yardage situation flip back to Greer pushes his way across the first down marker gets to the 40 yard line Patrice Alexander we will say his name quite a bit tonight he is the middle linebacker for southwestern Louisiana a 256 pounder and so he, he's a bruiser when you match him up with Profel Greer as you see his numbers uh, sometimes the play has a tendency to die right there Brandon Dyson and also Sean Griswold were out in front doing a nice job of blocking they created extra yards pushing a couple of people right out of bounds at the sideline Charlie Weatherby 14 and 15 in his third year here and 10 and 4 in conference games and 4 and 3 in conference games in Logan Boy, we have more stats than we need we won't get to the record under the lights. Sean Turner complete the gain of about two yards. Tim Sensley on the stop for the Raging Cajuns. Sensley a junior out of Ethel, Louisiana. Well, you brought it up. The Aggies have played four games <laughs> under the new lights. They've been four exciting games. There's Sean Turner, uh, what, second on the team in receptions. Mm -hmm. But four games under the new lights, and they've lost all four. Close, interesting games, but they've yet to pull one out under these new lights. Second down, eight yards to go. Ball's on the 42-yard line. All the receivers are lined up to the left. Wells fakes to Greer. Rolls out. Throws across his body. Tips. And incomplete. Tim Sensley uh, was the one who got a hand on it. Knocked it away. Interesting how the Aggies are going to this play action because of these uh, overly aggressive rushers. Here comes Wells after faking the handoff. And again, throw, have to throw across his body a little bit off the mark, and then it was tipped away by a, a defender uh, from USL. Third down play, third and eight. Southwest Louisiana second in the conference in third down conversions from the defensive standpoint. They've held opponents to 27% for a success ratio. Second to the Aggies, by the way. Back, fires to Sean Turner, gets him blocking from the official. Turner gets across the 50 into the 44-yard line in raging Cajun territory. Orlando Thomas finally makes the tackle, but Sean Turner with a nifty piece of running and some nifty open field blocking. Yeah, uh, a great sort of a delay pattern as Wells drops. He's looking to his right all the way, holding off on that wing and then cutting across the middle and making the catch, and this guy is fast. He's on the track team, and he knows how to run, and he proved it with that one. Nice first down play by the Aggies. Again, keeping the... Uh, there's Turner keeping this USL defense off balance. Three for four now passing for 24 yards for Wells. First and 10 balls in the southwestern Louisiana territory at the 44-yard line. Quick toss out to Dwayne Williams. Plunges ahead for a gain of about five. Tim Sensley again on the, on the stop for the Cajuns. Jim Zorn told us that they had a very good audible package, they felt, ready for this uh, blitzing USL team. And... I don't know if that was changed at the line of scrimmage or not, but it seemed like an automatic. He was uncovered, Williams was, and I think that's the signal to, to Wells, like uh, Anthony Calvillo last year, to just get the ball out there quick and make some yards. Second down and five. Clock is 11.03 and counting here in this first period. No score yet. Popo Greer in motion. Cajun show blitz and do so. Quick toss out to Ivy Russell. 
who squeezes ahead just beyond the first down marker at about the 33 yard line looked like he got beyond the first down marker by about half a yard before he was brought down by Fernando Thomas the uh, USL blitzing defense the Aggies filled the gaps everybody see number 40 there on the left of your screen couldn't get through quick enough and it bought Wells just enough time to get the pass out and it looks like it is a first down uh, out there on the flat but the, the blocking picked up a couple of blitzing linemen or uh, the secondary people just enough to get Wells free of uh, trouble Johnson and Alexander on the right side Wells directing Greer and Sean Turner is way down on the left side Wells fires aiming for Turner the timing route and that's gonna be a flag yes no question about it it was uh, Fernando Thomas who was out there with Turner and he knew he was in trouble. The pass was not uh, real well thrown, but it really didn't matter because by then there's Wells dropping back, throwing right at our camera. And I don't know if we'll get to see the bumping and grinding going on, but it was a, it was interference all the way. Actually, wasn't that poorly a thrown a ball? It was just the Turner was shoved out of bounds and couldn't get to it. Fernando Thomas with coverage. He's got four or five speed. He's known as a hard hitter. Senior out of Shreveport, Louisiana. Unable to get turned around and find the ball on that play. So automatic first down for the Aggies. Takes them down to the 17-yard line. We'll see. Hopefully they won't be too busy tonight. I was just down talking with them, and somebody made the decision that they should all wear short sleeves. <laughs> And not all of them were thrilled with that decision. Aggies with five first downs now already in this game. Wells rolls out, finds the tight end, Kevin Corner again. At about the 12-yard line, a pickup of five. John Harris with a tackle for the Cajuns. And Joe Bailey on the left end was blitzing hard on Wells, and still Matt got it off and kept his composure. Watch this. He Fakes the handoff, now he rolls. Didn't, didn't fool Bailey, who's right there, but Wells threw it over him, and a pinpoint pass. Nice, nice pass under pressure. It seems the Aggies have made the adjustments they need and have really put together a nice drive. Second down, five yards to go. Ball's on the 13-yard line. That's Johnson in motion. Pitch back to Greer. Greer will get the first down. A little bit more. Touchdown, Utah State. Greer found the room around the right side and used that breakaway speed that we talked about early on. And Profel Greer finds the end zone for the first time in this season. He Isn't was in the amazing? end zone ten times last year, and here at game number seven, he finds the end zone for the first time. There was some question whether or not he would even start uh, Jim Zorn told me earlier today they were still trying to decide whether it would be Abu Wilson or Profail Greer. Good decision. Yeah. Greer has a, his average is just over two yards a carry this year, which is down sharply from last year. We saw some contact on the extra point attempt. But it's good. The Aggies jump up. Drawing first blood. Seven to nothing now. The score in the first period. Nine minutes, 37 seconds left. And we will take a break as we leave you with a replay of Profile Greer's touchdown. Back in a moment right after this. Okay, let's take a look at the replay of the touchdown as Wells turns and makes the quick pitch to Profile Greer, sweeping to the right. Now, Greer's the key on the play right here is the outside receiver, Sean Johnson. Freeze it for just a second. And we see Johnson coming across my telestrator's malfunctioning on me, but he's going to throw the block right there and hold that man up long enough for Greer to get to the outside and down the sideline for 13 yards and a score. And the Aggies, what, three or four or five minutes into the game have taken the lead. A beautifully executed drive, Carlton. Brian Jackson back deep again to receive the kick. He takes it. Oh, steps in front is Jewel, and Jewel has speed up the middle. All the way to the 39-yard line. He just exploded. And there is a flag down. Funny thing was, at the end of the run, Todd Townsend almost stripped the ball out of his hand. But what we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, Jules the dangerous one, and he proves that right away. Here he takes it as they're trying to decide which one to, to catch the ball out across the 15 and the 20. And he's on his way. Let's see if we can see Townsend come in here and almost strip it away. He was going for the ball. And then the stop is made by Spencer Wagoner, number nine. Well, Jewel got a little bit out of control here. Let's see what the call is. 
Two penalties against the Aggies. Do they have the option to uh, accept them both, or do they have to decline one? Or take the greatest denominator? We'll see what happens. Offside on the kicking team. Penalty is declined. Five yards, face mask. Penalty is accepted. First down. There we go. So that'll move the markers to the 45-yard line where the Raging Cajuns will take over. Just under four minutes of time it took for the Aggies to move across the field rather handily. 71 yards. That's got to make the offensive coordinator Jim Zorn feel happy. DeLome back to pass. Looking across the flat for his for his running back, and he will find some room himself up the middle, uses that speed to get to the 41-yard line of the Aggies. Sean Coleman on the stop for Utah State. Well, the Aggies were in a coverage defense all the way. You could tell that because there was not much of a rush. The Aggies are going to try, uh, they tell me, as we watch him drop back, to, to try the pressure with just the four front linemen throwing in some blitzes here and there. But DeLone couldn't find anybody open, so he's sprinting right up the middle and a good gainer for the sophomore quarterback. Southwestern Louisiana brings their plays in through their receivers. Franco Smith, Darren Struther in the game. That's Cotton in the backfield. He takes it. A pickup of about a yard and a half to the 40-yard line. Good job that time by Matt Hawk, who's the other starting defensive tackle with Matt Balls. Hawk wears number 98. He just kind of pushed against the pressure and caved in the whole blocking wall. Also, you see uh, Johnny Williams there, who is figuring in on that play as well key again is to try to uh, stop this running game and they came out this time on the first down and threw the ball sensing that they're gonna have a little trouble running the ball against Utah State there's a look at Jake DeLome 1200 yards passing so far this year with 12 interceptions and that was his total last year yeah. for all of last year was 12 interceptions he's back to pass again rolling out to his right side looking and finds the intended receiver that's Ron Thomas Good for a first down, but also a flag. If the play stands, it will be at the 30-yard line. Let's we'll see if we can decipher what the officials have seen. Personal foul against Utah State is what, is what the officials' early indication was. Coach Weatherby wants an explanation. Well, and they will take that all Play the way. Hit, defense, 15 yards penalty, first down. That really hurts. One of the reasons uh, why you, this is a, this is one of those things that sportscasters think up when they have a little bit too much time on their hands. But Jake DeLome, when they lose or when they win, he has a bad game. Six for 14. You see his average there, 108 yards. When they when they win, he has a rougher game. It's uh, it's. it's one of those ironic twists as you see the raging cajuns muscle over to about the 11-yard line brings up a second down play donald toomer gary brown on the stop for utah state they they rely heavily on that running attack both um, mossick and cotton have to perform and they do perform when they win well right when they run the ball well they win the games here's a the, the pitch to mossick in this case sweeping the left side uh, coming up donald toomer is going to make a nice hit right there number 22 puts his head right into the play. When they run the ball, they're more successful. When they're forced to go with the loam, it doesn't work so well. Second down and six. Ball's on the 11-yard line inside that blue zone. And there are about four jerseys all over DeLome. A sack all the way to the 18-yard line. Johnny Williams got him first. This is one of those times where DeLome, who is known to make some bad decisions, he's made a few this year, did here. But, of course, the Aggies didn't give him much time to make any kind of decision. Johnny Williams is all over it. It seemed like the offensive line just kind of got down on one knee as four blue jerseys just stormed into the backfield. Ron Thomas and Donald Richard. He's the top receiver here for Southwestern Louisiana. They both come into the game with the play. And both Richard and Thomas are on the right side. Out of the shotgun. DeLome again pressured. Danilo Robinson forces the pass. It's over the intended. Intercepted. Intercepted, Charles McMillan on the two-yard line. The two wide 
wide receivers to the right side did a little crossing pattern about seven or eight yards down. And DeLome, I don't even think, saw him break off the pattern. He was so much under pressure and then threw it up for grabs, and McMillan was there. Out of the shotgun again. Look at the pressure coming from right up the middle. He has no time at all. And then the toss toward the goal line. It's kind of floating up in the air. And McMillan getting out in front of the wideout Donald Richard and made a nice play. That's the 13th interception uh, of the year for, uh, for DeLome. Well, that's the good news. The bad news. The Yankees are on their own two-yard line. 98 yards in front of them. Again, Wells directs Greer to another spot as there seemed to be some confusion at the snap and Wells just kind of moves into the middle of the field a pickup of about a yard. Not sure exactly what happened there but there was some confusion and Matt Wells just wanted to get what he could out of it. Wasn't setting up for field goal position in the middle of the hash mark. <laughs> Second down nine. There's six minutes and three seconds left in the first period and counting. By the way, as Wells comes up to the line of scrimmage, he's six of seven throwing the ball. That's as good a start as he's had this year. Wells rolling to his right, throws on the run and over the well, intended receiver. Yeah, good decision there because there was no opening and uh, you don't really want to be chased around in your end zone for a long time, so he got rid of the ball. Third down and nine. Matt Wells has thrown for 810 yards on this season. You see a look at his numbers tonight. That would uh, bring him to a total of 850 yards. Five touchdowns, five interceptions. He you know, actually, boys. Yeah. He, he and DeLome are uh, right close together in the quarterback ratings in the league. Uh, Wells is, is fairly solid because he doesn't throw the ball away so much. Doesn't throw it to the other team. Pro failure of Greer, the lone setback. Sean Johnson, Kevin Alexander along the right side. Wells, three-step drop, fires over the receiver again. Going for Johnson again. And that'll bring up fourth down. So we'll get to, again, uh, test the medal of Nate Morreale as he will be close to the end line in the end zone. <laughs> Nate Morreale averages uh, just over 40 yards a punt. He's punted 53 times already. And if they've got tennis elbow, they might have punter's knee because he has been called on quite a bit there. He's had a long of 55 yards. And back deep to receive for the Ragin' Cajuns is Damon Mason. Mason averages nearly six yards a return, and he will get excellent position to choose from, and he's just going to let it bounce. Looks like the Cajuns will take over on the Aggie 44-yard line. Excellent position. We will take a break with the score. Utah State 7, the Southwestern Louisiana Region Cajun 0. 5 minutes, 40 seconds left in the first period. The Region Cajuns have excellent field position. We're just under 6 minutes left in this first quarter. They've got the ball on the Aggie 44-yard line. They will take over first and 10 following the punt from Nate Morreale, 41-yarder. That sounds good, a 41-yarder, but look at the field position. They're in Aggie territory because of the turn of events with McMillan's interception. Kenyon Cotton in the backfield. He takes the fake, and <laughs> Richard is met behind the line. Boy, Johnny Williams wasn't fooled on the little reverse try. He was right there to make the stop, number 49, for the Aggies. Up there on your screen. Well, if that play works, it works well, because Kenyon Cotton has got to be a great blocker with the size he has, 251 pounds. We mentioned earlier, he just doesn't go backward. When he falls, he falls forward and always seems to get a couple of yards out of it. He's their short yardage specialist, and so the plan was to get Richard to follow behind him. Johnny Williams, however, had already read that part of the script. A little bit of a change in the Aggie defense in that Lonnie Johnson is one of the down linemen now. He hasn't played a lot of football this year. Blown back to pass. Look right through the arms of Donald Richard. Richard's their leading receiver. 32 receptions on the year, but let that one slip by. Now again, they face a third and long, which is what Dick Bumpus and his defensive people want. Here's DeLome with uh, some time. He throws, and uh, Richard can't hold on, and uh, Spencer Wagner, I think, is there just to make sure he's ripped to the ground in case he had the ball. <laughs> it is a little chilly out there, and the hands probably sting a little bit. But that's not football. Third down and 11. Balls at the 45-yard line. DeLone rolling out to his left. Throws across the field. Aiming for Richard again. Coverage there. 
but it was very nice by Utah State. I think that was Corey Alexander. Yeah. And so that brings up a fourth down, a punting situation for the Raging Cajuns. They've been given some nice field position, but have been thus far unable to do anything with that. Kevin Alexander back deep to punt. And the punter's Mike Jones. We've met him before, an average of just under 40 yards a kick. Snap is low, no pressure, however. He's able to boot a beauty. Alexander will let it bounce. And it gets right to the one yard line. About the two, they will mark it down. A beautiful punt for Jones. He has sent now 16 punts this year inside the 20. And that punt inside the two was beautiful. We will take a break. Four minutes, 38 seconds left in this first quarter. Utah State up, seven to nothing. We're back in Logan, Utah, Carlton Wing here along with Craig Hislop. The Aggies again now inside their own five yard line to try to start a drive. First and 10 ball is on the two yard line. The defense has done what they have needed to thus far for from the Utah State point of view. The Aggie offense has one very nice scoring drive. They're backed up against the wall again here. Matt Wells, first and 10. Sabu Wilson in the backfield, Ivy Russell in motion. Fake the pitch and give to Abu for a gain of about a yard, as if he even got that much. Abu curled around as they faked the pitch to him, and he just took the direct handoff from Wells. Went back up the middle of the field, but was unable to find any room. So this is exactly what happened. Uh, the last time the Yankees were down this deep, they started on the two. There was a little bit of a misdirection play, and they ended up one yard ahead, so it's second down and nine. Abu Wilson still in the backfield. Up at the top of your screen, that's Sean Turner. Sean Johnson in motion. Pitch back to Abu this time. He's got a little bit of room. Squeezes ahead for a gain of about three yards. Orlando Thomas with a tackle for the Cajuns. Thomas, the, the guy that made the stop again, we talked about his blitzing antics. And he also led the country in interceptions uh, last year is a big safety at about 6'2", 215 pounds. Charlie Weatherby said he'll be the top safety drafted uh, in the NFL uh, this year. Ball is at the six yard line. Third down, yet another third down attempt here for the Aggies to try to keep this drive alive and try to get the positioning of this field a little bit more toward the north side. Matt Wells calls timeout. Abu Wilson jumped over to another position and that seemed to confuse them a little bit so with third down and six yards remaining the timeout they'll talk it over well up to now the Aggies have thrown for 40 yards on uh, six of nine and uh, run for 20 so their 60 yard total compares to the uh, 29 for USL and really the difference is the the first drive of the game by Utah State uh, over 70 yards it took eight plays you remember the pass the corner that started it right off and then the 14-yard uh, pass from Wells to Turner, and then the uh, pass interference call uh, got the Aggies close, and Greer went on in on the nice block by Sean Johnson, and it's 7-0 as we're coming down the end of the first quarter. That has to be kind of a ray of hope, because the Utah State Aggies last year were the 15th-ranked offense in the country. They averaged 422 yards a game, 442 yards a game. This year, you stick a zero in between the 1 and the 5. It's 105th-ranked total offense in the country. 224 yards they average it's nice to see a 71 yard drive yeah. well and what's changed the coaches haven't changed Jim Zorn's still calling the plays the players have changed the offensive line's basically totally new you've got a young quarterback who's learning I think this is the best start to a game I've seen Wells have uh, this year he's he's doing well making some good decisions it's been a continuation of what the coaches said they saw last week at Louisiana Tech they were very impressed across the board uh, with this Aggie offense Ivy Russell again in motion, third down, six, big play. Abu Wilson up the middle, he finds room, gets the first down and more, met by a host of raging Cajuns, but not until Abu is able to get to the 21-yard line for a first down for Utah State. Boy, that makes a big difference, doesn't it? From the six to the 21, that's a 15-yard run for Abu. Let's look at it again, almost like a draw look, but it really wasn't, but he got the blocking right up the middle, out to the 21-yard line. Nice run by... Abu Wilson, who's probably every once in a while has in the back of his mind that, that knee injury of a year ago. And Aggie fans will have in the back of their minds 
the Utah State freshman rushing record that he set with nearly 800 yards a couple of years ago. Pass is incomplete. Britt Jackson with coverage for USL. Second down and 10 now. Clock has stopped with two minutes, 49 seconds in the first period. There's a look at Britt. The starting uh, the nickelback. This is Wells rolling to his right with Abu in front of him for protection. Threw it a little bit behind Sean, and that uh, gave uh, Jackson, the DB, a chance to get a hand on it and deflect it away. Kevin Alexander and Ivy Russell are at the top of your screen. Abu Wilson still in the backfield for the Aggies. Wells changing some things at the line of scrimmage. Wells looks and fires just a little bit behind Sean Turner. He had to come back for that pass, was only able to get a hand on it while his momentum was carrying his body the other direction. Third down and 10 now. Looks for the most part like, like uh, USL is holding true to form, a very aggressive defense. Somebody's always blitzing from either a defensive back or linebacker spot, and uh, that's why Wells has got uh, at the front of his mind uh, getting rid of the ball as quickly as he can. Or also to get the ball to the outside, as uh, we've seen that Abu in a couple of sweeps. And Greer scored on a play like that, too. Matt Wells, big third down, changes things again at the line of scrimmage. Abu Wilson moves and then comes in motion to the right side. Matt Wells met and met quickly of number 21, John Harris. Wells had nowhere to go as John Harris' second sack this year. He's a converted linebacker playing strong safety right now. And that gets the Aggies right back to where they were, which is a very poor position to punt from. Now here's Harris on the blitz, totally unblocked, coming from the strong safety position. Just one of those times. And up to now, you've got to admit that the Aggies have done a good job picking those up. But they didn't on that one, and it forces an end to a, the drive after the great run by Abu. Nate Morreale about two steps away from the end line there. Had a 41-yarder, but it still put the Cajuns well inside Aggie territory. This is another punt. Damon, Damon Mason gets it all the way to about the 40, the 37 yard line. I credit him with a 34 yard punt, a big floater, but boy, the game of field position is, is going against the Aggies. And remember, it all started when USL was knocking on the door. McMillan made the interception, but we played the rest of the game. Uh, and that was, uh, that interception happened with about six and a half minutes left for the entire six or seven minutes it's been played at this end of the field south end of the field the, the fans in there in the south side are getting the close-up view of this game seven to nothing utah state one minute 57 seconds left in this first period donald richard in motion and wiggling away and unable to find any room as david gill and tyrone trimble are in on the tackle that's marcus Pryor out of baton rouge louisiana He's averaging just over 40 yards a game for the Raging Cajuns. You see, he has to adjust at the line of the scrimmage as the holes are filled up. You know, I mentioned a little earlier that uh, we're seeing Lonnie Johnson of the defensive tackle. The guy we featured at the top of the show, David Balls, is not out there right now. Could be that they're going with a couple of second unit guys in the interior. Well, there's Pryor again. The ball is loose, and that's, I believe that's David Gill with the recovery for Utah State. David Gill was right there when the ball popped loose. There he is. Might and there's been, another big turnover. Might have been Trimble that knocked it loose. Number 18 for Utah State. If we get a chance to look at a replay, let's see what happens. Look for number 18 coming in there somewhere. Yeah, the diving tackle, and he knocked the ball loose. Nice play by Trimble. It's loose, and it's Gill that gets on it. And now the Aggies have the first decent field position they've had since they had the first drive to score. Well, I'm sure that's just exactly how they planned it was to get that big sack, take him down to the five, get the punt off, and then go for the turnover. Minute 13 left in the first quarter. Ivy Russell in motion for the Aggies. Matt Wells gives to Abu Wilson, works his way ahead, brings a tackler with him to the first down marker. Patrice Alexander was doing his best to hang on to Abu. Abu's a little fired up. The official kindly tells him to get back into the huddle. Abu was uh, saying this week that he, he could tell a big difference in the blocking at Louisiana Tech in the sludge bowl. He said the offensive line was doing a job, and obviously they must be, or he wouldn't be running like this. That's a nice run. Not even his longest of the night, but boy, he looks good running the ball right now. First down, ball's at the 45-yard line. Kendrick Huey 
is in the game for the Aggies. He's the backup flanker behind Sean Turner. Kevin Alexander, Kendrick Huey, and Sean Johnson are the receivers along the left side. To give it to Abu Wilson again up the middle. He works his way through traffic. He's able to get away from tacklers. He's got two men to beat. He gets dragging more tacklers all the way down to the 23-yard line. Big play. John Harris finally gets the stop for the Ragin' Cajun, but not until the Aggies come up with one of the bigger plays of the evening. 33-yard run by Abu, and here he is taking off. A couple of blocks, uh, actually, <laughs> not clips from behind, but uh, little bumps. And Abu, boy, a nice run, and he continues to drag a defender with him. That was a great play. Abu is running as well as we have seen him. Time is ticking away here on the first quarter. About eight seconds left. We'll probably get one more play off. And we do. Profel Greer up the middle. Tries to work some of his magic. Knee goes down on about the 21-yard line. A pickup of about one and a half. Derek McKinley, the closest Cajun to him. And that is the end of the first quarter. Utah State has drawn first blood, scoring first. Seven to nothing is our score. We'll be back with the second quarter right after this. We're back at the beginning of the second quarter here, and I know that it, uh, you seem sometimes the viewer at home can seem deluged with uh, numbers, but it's our job. When Utah State scores first, they have won 12 out of 16 games. In Charlie Weatherby's uh, tenure? Yes. When the opponent scores first, they're 2 of 11, so they are glad to get on the board first. Pass complete to Kevin Alexander. Has nowhere to go. A pickup of about four yards. Tim Sensley on the tackle for the Cajuns. Got about four yards on that play. Take a look at that again. Here's the uh, catch by Kevin. He's trying to figure out where to go. There is nowhere to go as Dwayne Williams was downfield to block. Earlier in the drive, uh, the 32-yard run by Abu Wilson turns out to be the longest run of the year. Previously, it was a scramble by Matt Wells that got the Aggies 27 yards. Third down and five yards to go. Aggies inside the red zone. Abu Wilson in the backfield. Goes in motion to the right side. That's Orlando Thomas coming in with the blitz. Wells able to get it away to Ivy Russell. And he's got open field ahead of him. Touchdown, Utah State. Matt Wells to Ivy Russell for Russell's first touchdown this year. And I really think, of course we don't know, but I really think Wells made the play by seeing the blitz and getting rid of that ball quick. So the preparation continues to look very good. They, they told us they had an audible package they thought would work against this aggressive defensive team, and he picked uh, Russell up out in the uh, flat right now, and that's uh, a second touchdown for the Aggies already. Mike and on for the extra point. Aggies looking to jump ahead 14 to nothing, and they do. Just inside the second quarter, the Aggies are now up 14 to nothing. And we will take a break as the teams do as well. You're watching Utah State Football on KJAZZ 14. The Aggies are responding gracefully so far to the aggressive defensive style of southwestern Louisiana. They lead it 14 to nothing here in the early going at Romney Stadium. If the Aggies keep up the pace, uh, they had over 100 yards in the first quarter. If they got a 400-yard game against this defense, it'd be one of the worst games Southwest Louisiana has played because they're one of the top 20 teams in the country defensively, and they don't even average giving up 300 yards a game. The Aggies are pretty much having their way on offense right now. That kick was out of bounds, so the penalty will ensue, and so the Aggies will re-kick it five yards back. Or, no, that's right, the Southwestern Louisiana will take it at the 35-yard line. That, that is one of the options. That seems to work well in most cases. 14 minutes, 10 seconds left here in this first half. There's the scoring drive. Russell on the 19-yard reception from Wells just took a couple of minutes after the fumble recovered by Gill caused by Trimble. First and 10 balls at the 35-yard line. Out of the eye formation now. We've got Cotton and Mossick in that order. Fake pitch up to Cotton in the middle. Bobbles around a little bit, but he gets all the way, just might be about six inches shy of the first down. Donald Toomer, Sean Coleman in on the stop. We'll see where they mark it. 
Watch Cotton as, uh, as Johnny Williams got a hand on the ball. Cotton was almost lost it and was able to fall forward. That's that weight that Cotton has. He's just a 251-pound muscle falling forward, and it's kind of hard to push him back. I was going to say it was the longest run of the night for them, that nine-yarder, but they had a 14-yarder earlier. This is Mossick. Mossick finds some room across midfield. Johnny Williams with a tackle, and there, there's a fumble. Spencer Wagner has come up with the ball, and Utah State recovers. Another turnover here that gives the Aggies the ball in great position. Let's see what we can see what happens. Johnny Williams on the stop. Oh, that I think was, he was down. That was, he had already hit the ground. That's not a good call, but uh, the Yankees will take it anyway. Take a look at that again. Johnny Williams there with a stop, and he is clearly on the ground. That's Mossick on the ground, clearly. However, ball pops loose. Aggies have it. Coach Weatherby won't complain. Well, and I was looking down at Nelson Stokely, the USL coach, and he didn't complain either, so let's go on with the game. Oh, Matt Wells drops back, fires up the middle. He's going deep for Kevin Alexander. Out of bounds. Well, I think they just wanted to score quickly before anybody changed their mind. Going deep for Kevin Alexander. He's been the big play man this year. Well, you saw that graphic three turnovers. McMillan's interview, the recovery by Gill, and now the recovery by Wagoner. And that's what stopped Southwestern Louisiana last year at this time. They had six interceptions last year. Stopped him last week against Southern Miss, too. Same thing. And they drove the ball well last week and then couldn't put it across. Matt Wells put it together. It's quite a nice game so far. Second down and 10. They give it to Profel Greer. He's got some room. Utilizes some of his agility. Gets to the 42-yard line. Two yards shy of the first down. Ken Sensley with a tackle for the Cajuns. Funny, funny thing about that play is here's Greer running and somebody actually smaller than him in front of him trying to block. We're talking about uh, 17, Sean Johnson, who did a fairly decent job. And remember when Greer scored on the... Uh, that pitch sweep in the first quarter, it was Sean Johnson that threw the key block. Who said little guys can't play football? <laughs> Sean Johnson is 5'6", 178 pounds. Profil Greer is 5'8", 185 pounds. Spud Webb and Muggsy Bogues in the backfield. Third down, two yards to go. That's Ivy Russell in motion. Give to Greer in the backfield. He's got to out elude some of the tacklers there to get back to the original line of scrimmage, which he does. But he is shy of the first down. Casey Brabham with a tackle for USL. <laughs> one of those uh, plays where uh, it, he could actually count it as one of his better runs, and all he did was get back to the line of scrimmage. Fourth down, and the Aggies are looking like they're going to go for it. The punting unit has not come out onto the field, and now they do. And the crowd was sensing some of the excitement. They wanted them to go for it. So now both teams switch very quickly. There's Nate Morreale. Damon Mason back deep for USL. Morreale gets off a nice punt. Mason calls for the fair catch, lets it bounce. The Aggies could down it. Unable to do so, but he bounced around. Well, Donald Toomer did his best. He almost kept it in play. He was basically the first guy down there. It would have been on about the one foot line which would have given USL a taste of their own medicine. The Aggies have spent a lot of time in the south end zone trying to get out of it, but USL takes over first and 10 on the 20-yard line. So we're early in the second quarter. The Aggies have a two-touchdown lead on the strength of the run by Greer and the catch of the pass from Wells by Ivy Russell. Jake DeLome hands off up the middle. That's Mossick, and the ball looked like it popped loose again. Dave Ball's in on the stop, a gain of about two yards. Here's a look at Dave Balls out of Ogden, Utah, Bonneville High School, two-time All-State as a defensive end. And he has made his 30th consecutive start for the Aggies. But not always as a down lineman. He's played a little outside linebacker. They've moved him in and out uh, quite a bit until the last year or two. Second down and eight. Mossick gets the pitch around the left side. Gets about another yard and a half. He brought down Paul Gustafson. Gustafson looked to be on some kind of a blitz move and was in the backfield fairly quickly and made a nice play on that one. Ten minutes, 56 seconds left in the first half and counting. Third down and six. We mentioned before the Yankee defense 
number one in the Big West Conference as far as holding opponents on third down possibilities. And now Southwestern Louisiana has called timeout, and so will we. With 10 minutes, 41 seconds left in the first half, Utah State up 14 to zero. We'll be back right after this. We're back in Logan, Utah. Carlson Wing here along with Craig Hislop. Aggies have much to cheer about. Up on the board, 14 to zero. So far, the defense has pitched a shutout. They've got an opportunity to stop yet another raging Cajun drive. The Cajuns are back in the shotgun formation, facing third and six with the ball on the 24-yard line. DeLome looking, firing deep, just heaves it up there. He's got an open tight end, Romero, who catches it at the 41-yard line. Spencer Wagner with coverage. Somehow, Romero was able to amble down the field and find an opening. What happened was uh, Wagner mistimed his jump. We might see this on the replay. He was there in coverage. But the bigger tight end really didn't have to make a huge play. Watch Wagner here, and you'll see him jump and come down, and then the catch is made right there. Another look at it. Well, that's uh, from further upfield. And now Wagner comes into the picture. He had the right idea, but it was thrown high, and he couldn't get to it. Kenyon Cotton, the lone step back in the backfield. He takes the handoff up the middle, breaks a couple of tackles. He's got an open field ahead of him. Gets all the way to the 19-yard line. Spencer Wagner again on the stop there. But now, suddenly, two plays down the road. USL is at the 19-yard line inside the Aggie Blue Zone. Here's the handoff powering right at us. Look at this big 250-pound fullback. Toomer finally fought off a blocker to help make the stop along with Wagner, and that's a 22-yard run, and it brings their total up to uh, 63 yards on the ground. Back into the eye formation. Cotton and Pryor in the backfield. Cotton takes it again on about the same play, and he's got a touchdown. Southwestern Louisiana. Kenyon Cotton ran the same play again. Off the left side. Not much uh, deception to this. They kind of fake the pitch, and then he just powers right up the middle from 19 yards out. In the first five drives, the Aggies did a good job defending the run, and now... Uh, with two plays, they push toward 100 yards rushing. And in fact, uh, 41 yards, the last two carries running the ball after the ground game had been pretty much this ground to a halt. Mike Schaefer on for the extra point. And he puts it right up the middle. The USL gets on the board, cuts the lead in half, 14 to seven. Kenyon Cotton, we talk about his power, and I've already mentioned that he's 251 pounds. He's a sophomore. But uh, he's also got speed to go with that power. 4 6 40 he runs. And he was able to show some of that on the last two plays that really put the uh, raging Cajuns. Here's a, a look at it from ground level as you know, Holm just turns and uh, hands it off to the big guy. And there's nobody going to get him. He's into the end zone for their first score. USL has had a nice turnaround the last couple of years. Two years ago, they were 2 and 9. And uh, what some people would say, thanks in large part to Utah State, they became 8-3 last year when Utah State, as we mentioned before, knocked off the first two quarterbacks in game number one and gave them Jake DeLome. There's a look at the scoring drive, 80 yards, five plays. Of course, the big two at the very end when Kenyon Cotton ambled in. Kind of interesting that all of their success has coincided uh, directly with uh, Nelson Stokely giving up his job as athletic director and concentrating just on his job as the football coach He's a former um, Louisiana State player, was an assistant coach, uh, had a lot to do with Clemson's success a few years ago as one of the coordinators, and, and now has taken over at uh, USL and uh, talked about his season last year in a co-championship with Utah State. Preseason number one he has, and he was also the returning coach of the year from 1993. A very, very short kick taken at the 23-yard line. And that's the tight end, Hamilton who ends up catching the short kick. He gets to about the 37-yard line. There's a flag on the play, however. Big Mike Hamilton. Looked like he was caught a little by surprise with that kick, as was the rest of us. Was that bad English? Did I conjugate that incorrectly? Well, it weren't too, it weren't too good. <laughs> Illegal block oh boy. in the back. 
by the receiving team during the run back. First down. That's Jack Gatto, one of the uh, veterans of college officiating, a Big West official, obviously. Puts the Aggies back into familiar territory on the 16-yard line where they'll start their drive. Nine minutes, 44 seconds remain in this first half. Right in the middle of your screen, you're going to see what went wrong right there. Well, you saw me point at it, but I guess uh, you didn't know where I was pointing. It was Tyrone. Yeah, Tribble was in on that play. There's Abu Wilson cutting up field. He is running with power tonight. He gets to the 25-yard line, a pickup of nine, Patrice Alexander. But Abu Wilson, every time he runs the ball, he's dragging a defender with him for those last couple of yards. And still now, we've seen a couple of games that we've telecast before, and uh, the, the holes weren't there in earlier games like they are tonight. So let's not forget to give some credit to Jared Tuioni and uh, Robert Holmes and all the other guys up front that are that are doing a job Griswold and the whole crew you can ask any runner it takes a couple of steps to get that speed and when you don't get those two steps that's what happens Abu Wilson falls forward for about a yard looks like he will have enough for the first down though but when the offensive line provides that provides that initial hole the runners are able to then utilize that speed get the agility going and get some momentum Abu Wilson has been able to do that thus far in the evening that run about a one yarder will give him 71 yards on seven carries you see it right there my math is correct that's just over 10 yards a carry isn't that Craig don't ask me <laughs> oh Matt Wills goes down and the ball is loose we'll see what the officials say as to who has it the Cajuns say they do and they do at the 12 yard line a big fumble there as Matt Wells was brought down behind the line Jeff Mitchell providing the pressure looks like Joe Bailey recovered the fumble as well let's take a look at it there you see the ball rolling behind two Cajun jerseys right there ball is at the 18 yard line the Raging Cajuns are now set up to tie this game. Eight minutes, 40 seconds left in the first half. Out of the eye formation again to give to Pryor. And Pryor muscles his way for a gain of about four. It was Trimble that made the initial hit and uh, slowed him down. A couple of other Aggies came along. Uh, Pryor there, 34. Again, we mentioned this earlier. In the estimation of Dick Bumpus, could be their best talent. He uh, has less than 300 yards coming into the game, but... On the videos that Bumpus has seen this year, he liked him as much or more than Mossick and Cotton. Again, out of the eye, Cotton and Pryor. Malone, second down, gives to Pryor again. Pryor doesn't have that much room this time, and he's forced back for a loss of about a yard. David Gill providing the stop for Utah State. It didn't look like anybody on the Aggie front was beaten that time. Everybody took care of their own assignment, and that opens it up for any linebacker, or in that case, well, Gill and then Scow there, number 40, and also Wagoner coming over to make the stop because all the down linemen take care of the initial wave of blockers, and that opens it up for those linebackers and secondary people. So they're pretty well stuffed after. David Gill leads the team and tackles another third down play. Third down and six. Richard in motion. Delone rolls out to his right side. Looking, David Gill providing pressure. He will sack him at the 26-yard line. Well, if nothing else, that makes for a 42-yard field goal attempt as fourth down is now upon us. Here's Delone on the run. Pressure from Trimble on the outside, but he gets past that, but not past Gill who draws a beat on him and whips him right to the turf in front of the Aggie bench, and that forces, instead of a touchdown drive, they've got to go for the field goal. And this will be a 42-yard attempt. Mike Schaefer, he is perfect. This would set a school record if he makes it for the most consecutive field goals. And he does. Ten consecutive field goals for Mike Schaefer, this 42-yard attempt. As Southwestern Louisiana now, 14 to 10. We will take a break. Six minutes, 34 seconds left in this first half. The Aggies ahead, 14 to 10. Mm -hmm. 
We're back in Logan, Utah. Mike Schaefer's kick there not only it puts him 10 for 10 on the year. We mentioned it sets a school record. He had achieved nine for nine twice now, and this time he was able to convert. And he is one of only three place kickers in the country now that is perfect on their field goal attempts. Of course, with qualifying numbers there. There's the kick. Taken at the seven, Kevin Alexander. Profile Greer providing a nice block to give Alexander some running room. Alexander gets all the way to the 38-yard line. There's a flag up on the other side of the field. I was watching uh, this side where Mike Hamilton was throwing a great block, but I think we're going to have a call against Utah State. Here's Alexander looking for the blockers. And now he gets to the sideline, and Hamilton there, number six, throws a block. But uh, somebody coming from the other side finally brought him down, but they're going to bring it back. Uh, Alexander has shown some nice agility on his uh, kick returns, averaging just over 24 yards a return. Had that nice 82-yarder earlier in the season against Colorado State. Five receiving team, 10 yards penalty, first down. Alexander is fourth in the league in uh, returns, 19th in the nation coming into this game. Well, that kick will come back all the way to the 12-yard line where the Aggies will take over. Six minutes, 27 seconds left in the first half. Aggies would like to use that clock well, drive all the way down, and put a score on the board before they go in for intermission. And the Ragin' Cajun defense would like to stop them. It looked like a little bit of movement on the left side of the Aggie offensive line, well, that would be Kevin Corner. Yeah, and also the uh, down lineman for USL were pointing at big number 77, Jared Tuioni. Not indicting him or anything, I'm just telling you that's who they were pointing at. <laughs> Again, the only time we seem to mention those guys is when something goes wrong. Although they have been blocking well for the Aggies. Defense, five yards. Oh, no, really bad call. First down. Matt Wells was able to argue successfully that Jeff Mitchell. Look in the upper right corner if you can see some movement. Whoops. There's uh, the Kevin Corner. Aggie tight end moving, and also here comes a USL player into the screen at the top of the picture as well. Now the Aggies are really in need of first down. Big play. <laughs> the Aggies get the benefit, and so now it's first down and five yards. The give to Profel Greer. Greer motors ahead. Looks like he'll be about a yard shy of the first down. Gets to about the 21-yard line. Rafael took the handoff, and he was waiting for uh, 65, Sean Griswold, to go one way or the other, ready to go off the block. Sean just kept pushing his man straight back, and uh, Rafael ran right up his rear end for a gain of a yard or two. Inside of six minutes left in the first half. Aggies less than a yard away from first down territory. Rafael, the lone setback. Wells rolls out to his right side, looks, fires, and almost found Kevin Alexander, but he almost found Orlando Thomas and Britt Jackson as well. Well, it is not that we see Thomas back in coverage like that. Orlando leads this team in tackles with 72. He has two interceptions on the year. Let's take a look at that play again, how it develops. Funny that Alexander actually went out of bounds and came back in to try to catch it. That's a no-no. Third down. Third down. One yard to go. Profell again. A single setback. All three receivers along the right side. Profell gets it, and he will not get the first down. The loss of about a yard on that play. As the Ragin' Cajuns celebrate a defensive stand that will force the Aggies again to punt or at least put them in a punting situation. About a yard and a half away from the first down. And the punting unit does come on. That'll be Nate Morreale. He has been called on several times already tonight. Aggies hanging on to a four-point lead here in the first half as we've got five minutes, 15 seconds left and ticking. Back deep again is Damon Mason for the Raging Cajuns. Morreale gets it off. Mason takes it at his own 47, finds a little room, and gets into Aggie territory, knocked down at the 48-yard line of Utah State. Xavier Foreman providing that last hit that kind of pushed Mason backward. Not a long punt, about a 33-yarder. Here's Mason coming up on it and deciding to return it. The Aggie coverage was pretty good, though, and there's the stop right there by Foreman. 
USL's been in Utah State's uh, end of the field quite a bit tonight for only having seven po or ten points. Out of the eye formation again. That's Cotton and Mossick. The fake to both. Delone rolls out to his left side. Fires. And incomplete to the intended receiver, Ron Thomas. Thomas would have had the ball at about the 31-yard line. Well, he threw it where he had to. Otherwise, the coverage by uh, Todd Townsend could have been a problem. Let's look at the play again. The receiver does have an uh, outside position. And you can see it led him just a little bit. A catchable ball, it looked like, though. Had a step on the coverage. Brings up second down and 10. Clock is at 4.52. High formation again. We've been doing that a lot here in the second quarter. Cotton and Mossick. That's Richard in motion going to the right side. And the give is to Mossick. Eludes Tyrone Trimble. Eludes Travis Scow. He's got first down yardage and more. Gets all the way to the 22-yard line. Todd Townsend finally brings down Steve Mossick. Well, the fact that you uh, called it that way with the uh, Trimble and Scow way upfield and, and in position to make the tackle and not doing it tells me that we had some defensive backs uh, on the move toward the uh, quarterback, and that must have opened something to the outside, and Mossick took advantage of it. That was a nice run. Mossick has good speed. 26-yarder. Adding to his total, he has three touchdowns on the year. First down and 10, balls at the 22-yard line. Again, the gift to Mossick, this time around the left side. Mossick, oh, stiff arm, Spencer Wagner gets all the way of an eight-yard gain back to the 14-yard line before Eddie Davis finally forces him out of bounds. Looks like about a half a yard shy of the first down mark. It's Mossick who coming into the game was their leading rusher almost 500 yards in seven games. Second down. They're saying it's a two-yard margin for the first down. The give up the middle falls forward close to where the first down mark is. This will probably have to be measured as it gets to the 12-yard line, which is right about where the first down marker is. Johnny Williams, David Gill on the stop. Johnny Williams, the senior defensive player of the year at Western Los Angeles College. The first uh, three or four series, an average run for them would be something like three... Four, one, minus one, four, and now look at them. 26, 8, 19, 22 in the last half dozen runs. The Aggies had, had really controlled the running game, and now that's really turning. We would seem the Raging Cajuns have found some kind of a weak link to exploit. Well, about by about three inches, that is a first down. First down and ten. Ball is at the 12-yard line. The clock is at four minutes and two seconds left in this first half. The Ragin' Cajuns could take a lead with a touchdown here. And a field goal would get them within one point. Jake DeLome back in the huddle as the clock starts ticking again. Single setback. That is Kenyon Cotton. Pryor is out as a receiver. The give is to Cotton up the middle. Cotton falls forward as he usually does to about the 10-yard line. Dave Balls with the stop, pick up of about two yards. I mentioned earlier that in addition to a big fullback, Cotton there, watch balls come right off the block, and also Danilo Robinson, the ball's 91, is right there, and they collaborate to bring the a big load fullback down. He's, he's huge, but I was going to say they've got an offensive line that's bigger. Keno Hill, 302. Sam Heinen, 300. Out of the eye, the pitch back to Pryor, looking for room around the right side. Get to inside the five-yard line, about to the four. Tackle by Travis Scow, number 40 for Utah State. Pryor at about 5'7", right there. Less than 200 pounds is a really a nice change-up to the, the big bowling cotton and... Uh, Maybe caught the Aggies a little bit off guard that time with the run down to the four. Greg Hamilton will enter the screen here shortly with the play. Number 22 is a freshman. Hasn't seen much playing time. But Jake DeLone calls timeout. They do want to put points on the board, and they want to make sure they've got all their ducks in a row, so to speak. Two minutes, 29 seconds left in the first half as the Rage and Cajuns take timeout. It's interesting how this game has gone. The Aggies set the tone right away with a 72-yard drive with the uh, passes to Corner and Turner and then the 
pass interference call against USL. Then Greer's run, and the Aggies led 7-0. And then USL made three big mistakes. The Aggies cashed in on the second one with an 18-yard pass to Russell, and it was 14-0. And at that point, Carlton, it seems that's when the game started to change, and and the, the Ragin' Cajuns figured out how to run the ball against Utah State, and Cotton, on one drive that led to their first touchdown, had uh, two runs back-to-back -back of 42 yards. One of them was a, a, a scoring run, and that made it 14-7. Later, they drove to a field goal, and it's 14-10, and they could take the lead if they play it right here now. And it's, it's really changed because they figured out how to run the ball against Utah State. And the Aggie defense has tested the medal of Jake DeLone. He's the sophomore who the Ragin' Cajuns are very happy to have on board. Well, we're ready now. Third down, three yards to go. Three backs, one trips. Jake DeLome has no one to pitch it to, and Dave Balls drags him down. Touchdown. Touchdown, southwestern Louisiana. I thought for a second that Johnny Williams, number 49, had wrapped him up at about the four, and in fact, it looked like DeLome was so convinced he was wrapped up he might pitch the ball let's see what happens here as Williams is coming down the line he grabs him there DeLome looks and decides what the heck I'll keep going and just falls into the end zone he pulls a Kenyon Cotton on that play and and scores to give them a lead well and when Jake DeLome turned to look his runner which I believe was Marcus Pryor had tripped right at the beginning of the play and there was no one to pitch it back to looked back saw nothing thought I better take it myself he did scored and the Ragin' Cajuns now with the addition of the extra point have taken a three-point lead here before a stunned crowd at Romney Stadium. Two minutes, 24 seconds left in the half. 14 to 17, the Aggies are down. Don't want to see that Aggie nighttime jinx come into effect here again. One of the greatest things that's happened here was the, uh, the establishment of the lights. Uh, supposedly that makes it possible for more people to get to the game, and the Aggies have played four interesting football games. Last year, Baylor and Reno, you remember. And this year, UNLV in Utah, close games, but all losses. Trying to turn that trend. All worth the money there for the fans <laughs> that are uh, paying for the attendance. Last year's homecoming game was that Nevada-Reno game, which went down to 36 seconds left in the game when Reno was able to plunge in for the winning touchdown. Take a look at that uh, scoring drive, and you see that southwestern Louisiana has found something that seems to work in that playbook. Motored them down the field on a pair of drives here, and now they hold a three-point lead. And well, the Aggies will have two minutes and 24 seconds yeah. to try to get on the board. And basically, they've almost doubled the Aggies in rushing. They've got 123 yards on the ground, and I'd say the last eight or nine rushes, they're averaging seven, eight yards a carry to get up to 123 yards. And the first downs are about even. The Aggies have nine, and USL seven. USL tries that short kick again. Again, it goes to Hamilton. This time, he seems to maybe know a little bit what to do with it. Doesn't get out quite as far, though, to the 25-yard line is where his forward progress takes him. The ball is loose, but we're not sure if it's down or not. There's a mad scramble and a lot of white jerseys. Hamilton got spun around a little bit, and oftentimes that spins the ball out of the hands, but it is Utah State ball. They will take over on the 25-yard line, first and 10, two minutes and 15 seconds left in the half. Let's see if we can see the ball pop loose. There is the ball. It was loose. Whoa. It was a live ball. I'm not sure how USL did not come up with that. There were about four white jerseys compared to one blue one. Matt Wells, the two minute and 15 second drill here at the end of the first half. Abu Wilson in the backfield. Sean Turner up at the top. The fake to Abu, Matt Wells, Matt by a very hungry Jeff Mitchell came in unscathed and Matt Wells goes down at the 13 yard line Jeff Mitchell with his third sack of the year no one there to block him let's see if we can see what happens he'll come onto the screen quickly see Matt the, Wells can attest that's two times also yeah. that Matt Wells could have easily fumbled the ball the play action did not fool Mitchell at all and actually what it does is forces Wells to take more time before he sets up and when you turn around and see a big red 48 in your face, you don't have too many options. Well, the ball is placed at the 15-yard line, brings up second and 20. A 10-yard loss on that sack. The pitch back to Abu Wilson, cuts across traffic, and gets to the 23. A gain of about eight yards, Orlando Thomas with the tackle. A minute 21 and counting. Nobody is taking time out. It's third down. 
and about 11 yards to go. There's Abu on the end of the run. And he has accounted for the greater bulk of the Aggies rushing game, which is now at uh, 76 yards. Officially, probably when you figure in well sacks, all the plus yardage on the ground probably belongs to Wilson. Third down and 11. The Aggies seem to be content to possibly run this. Well, there's some movement on the line. We saw that. Looks like Jared Tuioni. Number 77, the 285 pound junior. Took off a little early and got a hit. It did stop the clock, however, 47 seconds. There's the entire left side of the line. Dyson was doing a little twist inside, and Tuioni was black blocking to the outside. Offense. It looked good, except... Five yards, penalty. Third down. They went a little too soon. They'll make it third and 16. I want to remind you that Rob Howell will be at the KJS Studios in Salt Lake to bring you up to date with all of the events going on today. Former Utah State wide receiver. Yes, sir. A letterman. Got some exciting action from uh, some area teams. Utah, big, big game today. Abu Wilson around the left side. Doesn't have much room. Gets to about the 20-yard line. Patrice Alexander with the stop. And now there is a timeout. Southwestern Louisiana has called because they want to have some time to do something with this ball. It is now fourth down. 26 seconds left. That is the final timeout, if I heard the official correctly. So it is fourth down, 15 yards. The Aggies will punt. And uh, USL will have uh, a couple of plays to be able to try to get back at least into field goal position. They've got a hot kicker. Mike Schaefer, 10 for 10. Every field goal from here on out consecutively adds to his new record. As he made a 42-yarder a little bit earlier in the game. Damon Mason back, standing on his own 44-yard line to receive the punt. Nate Morreale, a busy foot this evening. He's standing on his 7-yard line. He has punted several times from inside his own 10. Gets the punt away cleanly. Mason takes it on his 47. Met immediately by Johnny Williams. There is a flag on the play. It's usually in the area of illegal block. Holding, clipping. Let's see what the official has to say. Well, nine seconds uh, ticked off the clock, so there are now 17 seconds left. And when we see what the penalty is, they're moving it back against Southwestern. Illegal Louisiana. block in the back during the, during the receiving team. Run back. 10-yard penalty. First down. It sounds like it's cold out there. <laughs> well, it was cold uh, several minutes before the game when we were on the field, and that was quite a while ago. The sun has gone down, you know. And they're wearing short sleeve shirts. <laughs> I wonder if that was his idea. 17 seconds left. And the Ragin' Cajuns will put the knee down. A little bit of extracurricular activity there. Eddie, Eddie Williams decided to take a little extra hit. Eddie Davis, excuse me. Well, the clock has ticked away. It is the end of the first half. And the score, Utah State 14, Southwestern Louisiana's Ragin' Cajuns 17. It's a three-point deficit at halftime. We'll send you back to the studios at KJAS. For Rob Howell's update right after this. We're back in Logan, Utah. Southwestern Louisiana saw that the game was about to get out of hand. They uh, came back and made a game of it here in the second quarter. Got fireworks behind us. 17 to 14 is our score at halftime. Coach Jim Zorn yesterday promised that it would be a very good game, and it has been a good game, very tight, but we've had two separate games almost yeah. in the different quarters. It's like uh, the, the tale of two quarters, where the Aggies start off with a long drive, take a 7-0 lead, USL starts making mistakes, three turnovers, the Aggies turn the middle one of the three into a touchdown, lead 14 to nothing with 10 minutes left in the first half, and then everything went wrong when USL starts running the ball. They had a little trap counter thing that they ran with great efficiency with Mossick and Cotton getting big chunks of yardage. 
And at the same time, the offensive line started to break down for Utah State. And the, the uh, blitzes were working finally. Early on, they didn't for USL, a known blitzing team. And it's changed the whole game around. They've outscored the Aggies 17-0 in less than 10 minutes of play. Indeed, also, we could call this uh, first half the first half of missed opportunity as well because there were three turnovers that uh, Southwestern Louisiana that had. had. Utah State only able to convert one of those into a score. And in the first quarter, Southwestern Louisiana had great field position all along, was unable to do anything with that. Yeah, and the Aggies, uh, we, you may remember we were talking about the totals at the end of the quarter. It was something like 103 to 35 in, in total offense. That totally changed around. Uh, if you look briefly at the statistics in the second quarter of play, USL outgains the Aggies 135 to 28 in the totals, and that leaves us with what we have there. A slight edge in the first downs, a big edge in the rushing. I told you their running game really got going. Aggies do have a little bit of an edge in passing, but USL just as soon run the ball the rest of the game and win the game. The turnovers are the thing. The Aggies cashed in on one of them. Um, might want to be more efficient after they create some more of those turnovers on cashing in on them. And one of the keys also that we mentioned early on in the game, and this is falling true to form, uh, Jake Delom, Delom, excuse me, two for seven with 44 yards. He is not having a great passing day, and that's exactly what Southwestern Louisiana wants because both Mossick and Cotton are running the ball well. And they have, as you see there, 126 yards rushing. When they rush for over 110, they're 4-0, and or I mean, excuse me, 3-0 and on this season. They like it when they can run the ball. They get to control the clock a little more, and you see a little bit of a difference there in the time of possession. That makes a difference for Southwestern Louisiana. That's what they want to be doing. And in the second quarter, they were able to do so when uh, Cotton was able to take uh, those two successive runs of 42 yards, the last one into the end zone, and really got the ball rolling for the Raging Cajuns. Always Dick Bumpus, who's the defensive coordinator, fo former Arkansas defensive lineman, his, uh, his goal for the Aggies defensively is always to stop the run. And that was emphasized this week because they knew if they could stop the run and force Delone to pass, USL would be in trouble. Well, it's worked the other way around in the second quarter. Nelson Stokely's running the ball like he wants to, so he doesn't have to make his quarterback pass the ball, and that's why they have a slight lead. This is going to be an interesting second half, and always the third quarter seems to be the problem for Utah State. They've really been outscored in third quarters, and they've got to stay uh, stay with it to, to stay in the game with this USL team. The Yankees have only scored eight points in the third quarter. Yeah. That is by far their worst quarter all year, and they have allowed the opposition 54 points in those quarters. That is by far the worst. The third quarter really can kind of dictate the uh, uh, the the ability athletically to, to stay in this game. We got fireworks behind us. I think we better get out of here. We'll take a break. We'll be right back right after this. We are back as we are just about set to begin the third quarter here in Logan, Utah's Romney Stadium under the lights. The Yankees will receive the kickoff from southwestern Louisiana. Back deep for the Yankees. That's Profel Greer and Kevin Alexander. And we are now set to go. 17 to 14 to score. Southwestern Louisiana able to utilize a very nice second quarter to take the lead here. Again, they go with a short pop-up just behind the shortstop. Mike Hamilton gets the ball, and the ball pops. Looks like the ball popped loose again. I think they've uh, found something they want to. Well, I guess it didn't happen. Uh, seeing things. Those lights were awfully bright at halftime, weren't they, Craig? Didn't bother me. <laughs> well, we're, we're getting so used to seeing the tight end return the kicks. This is a little unusual. 31-yard line. The Aggies will take over first and 10. Matt Wells, look at his first half numbers. Just over 50%. 62 yards. He'd like to build on that here in the second half. Wells gives to Greer. Greer met at the line. Paul Cable. Big number 92, 260-pound sophomore out of Bunky, Louisiana. Actually, uh, he and Derek McKinley were the starting tackles uh, tonight. Clifton Sylvester started a lot, was displaced by uh, the two of those. And he just shed a couple of blockers and made that play. Well, second down, there was a gain of about a foot on that play. So second down and nine yards and two feet. Up at the top of your screen, Kevin Alexander, Sean Johnson, Wells. Looks to that side, fires to Alexander, complete. Run out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Tim Sensley with coverage. A four-yard pickup for the Aggies. Brings up third and six. A little uh, out and back, out and back, cutting toward the sideline pattern. And Alexander, there, number four, who's the Aggies' leading receiver coming into the game, makes the catch here, coming back toward 
Wells, and he rolls out of bounds. Let's watch it now on isolation as he cut back toward the sideline, coming back toward Wells. Nice play, but not the yardage they needed. Third down and six. Profil Greer, the lone setback. All three receivers on the left side. Ivy Russell, Sean Turner, and Wells rolls out to that side, and it's picked off. Incomplete, incomplete. Britt Jackson trapped the ball. Was looking for his first interception of the year, but it did bounce first, and so it brings up a fourth down situation, which brings out the punch. Well, not the kind of offense the Aggies wanted to start the second half with. Here's the throw, and Jackson dives it, definitely bounced, and he trapped it before he got his hands on it. Again, Wells making that tough across-the-body throw. Right-handed quarterback moving to his left. Nate Morreale to punt. Damon Mason back deep to receive a very high punt. Mason calls for a fair catch at the 30-yard line and drops the ball. The ball is still loose. The flag is down at about the 28-yard line. It would appear that he that uh, the coverage was probably within that two-yard bubble that they give the receiver to catch the ball. It's the only thing I can think of because they can't possibly say that he everything else was legal and then he was in control of the ball because he wasn't. Take a look at that again as we see it dropping down from the stratosphere. Oh well, he was there was an Aggie too close to him and I think that'll be the call. He went whizzing by and tried to get out of the way, but he was within that area. And Jack Gatto is going to probably tell us as much right now. The microphones have quit working. It's so cold. Well, it moves southwestern Louisiana up to the 34-yard line. They go into the I formation again. Cotton and Mossick. And they give up the middle to Cotton. Plunges ahead, gain of about two and a half. Well, nobody blocked Danilo Robinson, and then Gary Brown was really there, too, as all the blocking seemed to slide to the left, and that left uh, Danilo open to make the play. But, but they really figured out the blocking scheme late in the uh, first half. But that time, the Aggies shut it off quickly. Pick up of about two and a half yards. Second down, a short eight. Two backs, that's Cotton, that's Mossick in motion. Again, to give up the middle to Cotton, and he plunges forward right up to the first down marker. Gary Brown with a stop for Utah State. They are calling it as a first down up to the 45-yard line. The Raging Cajun 45-yard line. 13 minutes, 14 seconds left in the third period. Just underway here in the second half. So look at the tight end, Cody Romero. Had that big reception earlier in the game. Well, in two scrimmage plays to start the second half, 11 rushing yards. They, they live on that all night long. Mossick in motion again to give up the middle to Cotton. A big hit from Paul Gustafson. Stop David Gill in there holding him up for Gustafson to give the hit. Pick up of about four yards on the play. Bring up second and six. Kenyon Cotton has taken the snaps, taken every one of them so far. Aggies are continuing. There's the uh, end of that play with Cotton barreling into some Aggies. Aggies continue to go with Matt Hawk and uh, David Balls and Danilo Robinson and Johnny Williams along the front and uh, Gill and Brown, the inside linebackers. That's Donald Richard in motion. Give up the middle this time. It's Mossick across midfield to the 47-yard line. Danilo Robinson with the stop. Third down and three it will be. Let's look at Danilo. The Wendell B. Anderson Scholarship Holder. It's a political science scholarship here on campus. Danilo showing some political roots there. Third down, three yards to go. Ball's on the 47-yard line. The Cajuns have a little bit of confusion, and we've got another timeout. Has not even just, uh, just over three minutes into the second half. They take a timeout. 17 to 14 is our score. 11.43 left, and we will take a break, as the teams do. Back in a moment right after this. We're back live in Logan. It's a little cold outside. Well, but look at the people on the left of the screen. They were strangers before they got to the game. Now they're sharing that blanket. Which is nice. The necessity, the mother of invention. All right, big third down play. Third and three. That's Cotton in the middle. 
A toss up the middle, complete to the tight end. Romero gets all the way to the 23-yard line. Danilo Robinson providing some uh, coverage there, but not until the damage was done. A quick toss over the right side gets the Ragin' Cajuns all the way to the Utah State 23-yard line. And quite a bit of time for DeLome to get it off, too. There's the Danilo trailing the tight end. The question is, what's a defensive end doing downfield and covering? The other thing is, maybe the Aggies in third and three, the way the U.S. Open running the ball, were thinking that was the play. And they threw it instead. And Cotton does take the ball up the middle this time, picks up about uh, two yards. David Gill with a stop for the Aggies. That's what the Aggies, I'm sure, were expecting on third and three. It was another view of Cotton coming up the middle. Darren Struther, there's a look at uh, David Gill there. Darren Struther and Franco Smith in the game for the Rage and Cajuns. And they take their positions. Second down, seven yards to go. Again, Cotton muscles his way across the 15-yard line. A flag is down. Gary Brown with a stop for Utah State. The run gets up to about one yard shy of the first down marker. We've got an injured player. I believe that's number 51, Sam Heinen. He's the starting left guard. All 300 pounds of him, and he's not even the biggest guy on the left side. Keno Hills goes at 302, and their backup, Wardell Reddish, at a bulky 311 pounds. This is a big offensive line. In fact, here comes Anthony Clement, number 70, who goes at 332. He's just a growing freshman. Now Heinen's going to get up, and he'll have to leave the game for at least a play. Even the backups on this team are are fairly sizable. This is the tenth time that uh, USL's had the ball in this game. It's the seventh time they've been in Utah State's territory. And remember, most of it was spent in the, what is it, late first quarter or so when they had the ball so many times and didn't get much out of it uh, Only three before scores. they finally took the game over, right? Three scores with seven times being in Aggie territory. Jake DeLome. The reverse around the right side. Richard tripped up Paul Gustafson. Richard has one rush on the year. He lost four yards on that play. He lost about two yards on that one. Two rushes on the season, negative six yards. Take a look at that play again. Yeah, the reverse after the fake one way, going the other. Boy, Gustafson did a nice job. And if he hadn't gotten him, number nine, uh, Spencer Wagoner was there too. Third down, 21 yards to go as the Cajuns have gone backward. Out of the shotgun. DeLome looks and fires downfield into the outstretched arms of Donald Toomer. Interception at the 12-yard line. Donald Toomer with his fourth interception this year. His 13th career interception. He's closing in on the interception record of 18 set by Henry King back in 1965 and 66. So the Aggies will take over as southwestern Louisiana was threatening. Well, I was watching Toomer on that play, and all the way, he was just standing there waiting for it to come right to him, watch him jump right to the ball and pick it off and stop the drive, a drive that just started back at the 34-yard line. Remember, after the Aggies' punt coverage set them up in pretty good field position, but Toomer comes up with it. Toomer's eyes were probably as big as saucers waiting for that ball to come down. Abu Wilson, not much room around the right side. Patrice Alexander forcing... Abu out of bounds. This is the fourth mistake, the fourth turnover that either, depending on how you look at it, USL has made or the Aggies have forced and only won by Utah State and still USL has a three-point lead. USL also has a history of uh, letting up a little bit in the second half defensively. And uh, we'll see how the third and fourth quarters come into play, see what their conditioning is. Coach Weatherby told us at the beginning of last year, you can always judge a team's conditioning by how they come out in the third period. Hasn't been too, too nice for the Aggies so far. Ivy Russell with a nice catch there, and he's out running 
defenders there all the way to the 35 yard line. Britt Jackson with a nice open field stop that really could have saved the touchdown there. As Utah State gets to the 35 yard line, first down. Yeah, and again, credit to, to Wells for, uh, watch Casey Brabham if we get a, a chance at the replay, drawing a bead on Wells, number 40. Well, we won't see that. That's the end of the uh, play when the catch is made and the run by uh, Russell, but, but Wells really did a great job to get rid of the ball at all because he barely turned around to throw it. And watch number 40 right there in the middle of the screen coming right at him. Wells got it off and was whacked, but still made a great play. Ivy Russell with a nice reception. Sean Johnson in motion. Fake the pitch, gives to Abu Wilson up the middle. He's driving those legs, a gain of about seven yards. Casey Brabham and Orlando Thomas in on the stop. Matt Wells and the Utah State offense on this drive at least doing uh, what they were doing back in the first quarter. Now here's that play we just watched and the run and look at that ball. Boy, good job to keep control of it. The previous play, the pass that Wells got off was a 23 yarder. That's the longest pass play for the Aggies tonight. Well, there was a massive change in the receivers as in these uh, plays. Kendrick Huey in the game, Robert Thomas, number 16 in the game. Ivy Russell back in. He's in motion. Give to Abu up the middle again. Got a little bit of running room. Gets across the first down marker all the way to the 49-yard line. It'll be first down for Utah State. Knocking on the door of Cajun territory. Off the blocks of Robert Holmes and Sean Griswold. There's Abu. But again, more times than not tonight, we've seen good blocking by the offensive line. And you know, as well as I do, if you followed Utah State, that's been the problem this year. They haven't been getting it and Abu was the guy who said that it was coming together in that mud bowl game against the Louisiana Tech even though it was hard to judge in those conditions he said I could tell they're coming together as an offensive line and that it's working tonight first down and 10 Sean Johnson in motion pitch back to Abu again gets control of the ball and gets about a yard Patrice Alexander put every one of his 256 pounds to work there and forced Abu Wilson backward as he picked up about a yard, it'll be second down and nine. Watch Patrice Alexander come into your picture here. And that's the end of the run right there. That was his 13th run of the night and his 98th yard. So the next one probably puts him over 100. The ball is right on the midfield line. Abu Wilson in the backfield goes in motion to the left side. Three wide outs to the right side. Matt Wells, a quick toss to Ivy Russell. Shakes one tackler loose. Ivy Russell in a foot race all the way down to the 22-yard line. First down, Utah State. Well, I think it's another big play by Wells because, again, the pressure was there, and again, he got rid of it. Look at this. There was pressure from his left side. Fernando Thomas, their number six, misses the tackle. And finally, Tim he's Sensley. brought down by Sensley, yeah. Sensley comes in, goes for the fumble first. That's the first snag you try to make on an open field runner to try to make that ball pop loose. Then you got to get the tackle, however, because if he shakes that tackle loose, it's six points. Ball's at the 22-yard line. Abu Wilson in the backfield. An early snap caught everyone off guard. Whistles and flags everywhere. Just like the homecoming parade today. <laughs> came right outside of our hotel. Whistles, sirens, yeah. everything. Yeah, one o'clock, woke you up. Yeah. <laughs> well, the penalty is against the Cajuns, and so it moves the Aggies even further down the field. 65th homecoming this year. We have a new longest run tonight. Oh, pass, I'm sorry. Longest pass tonight, 28 yards. Previous was 23. Breaking records as we go. Six minutes, 40 seconds left in the third quarter. And the Aggies are now first down five yards to go. Ball is on the 17 yard line, back inside that blue zone. Williams in motion. Flip back to Abu Wilson who finds nowhere to go. Nothing doing there, it'll be second down and five. Derek McKinley with a stop. McKinley literally uh, grabbed, I think, Robert Holmes and just shoved him right into Abu Wilson. So Abu stays under. 100 yards because of McKinley's fine play. Who's knocking on the door of the century mark here? Former high school hurdles champion, Abu Wilson was. 
Five minutes, 50 seconds left. Wells back, looks, fires. Just past Kevin Alexander. He was about, he was set to make the catch on about the nine yard line. You noticed how we have not said Orlando Thomas's name a great deal tonight for whatever reason. I think maybe he's being picked up on a lot of those blitzes he's famous for. Well, in and out of the hands there of Kevin Alexander. Kevin Alexander, goodness. the wide receiver. Well, it's third and five. Aggies would like to get six here. No one left in the backfield after Wilson vacated it. Wells flushed out of the pocket, running for his life around the right side. And he plops down at about the 15-yard line, about three yards shy of the first down. A pickup of two, Pat Brennan. There you see Wells spot. arguing for a more favorable spot. Well, let's decide for ourselves as he's chased out of the pocket, running toward the Aggie sideline. This is a design pass play, but no way now. He can't find anybody tripped up, and where does he go down? I'd say at about the... Right at the 15. 15. I guess that's where they put it. Well, maybe they know what they're doing after all, huh? Fourth down. This is a 32-yard attempt. If the kick is up... And good, and we've got a tie ball game here with just under five minutes left in the third quarter. The Aggies and Micah Knorr. As Micah Knorr nails his sixth field goal of the season, we'll take a break. It's all tied up, 70 to 17. Don't go away. We're back in Logan, Utah. Carlton Wing here along with Craig Hislop. The Aggies have just scored to tie the game up at 17. Coach Zorn last night on the KJS Sports Ticket promised a good game. He said it would be close and tight and kind of have the air of a conference championship, and it has so far as we're all tied up at 17. Teams fighting and scratching for every yard. Micah Knorr here with a 32-yard kick has tied the game. And we are set for the kickoff. This one is handled by Brian Jackson, number 45, who gets to the 20 plus, about falls forward to the 24 yard line. Kenyatta Green, who gets most of his playing time on the special teams, made the stop along with Sean Coleman there, number 31. Brian Jackson and Jewel, Robert Jewel, have been returning the kicks. And after Jewel's one return for about 35 yards, it's Sure, the Aggies like to keep it away from him. First and ten, ball to the 25-yard line. Again, the give to Cotton, and again, he's got some room and motors across the first down mark. Sean Coleman with the stop, and an 11-yard gain is a very quick first down for the Cajuns. Well, since, uh, since the early part of the second quarter, they have run mostly at will against Utah State. The reason the Aggies were leading in the first half was because they were stopping the run. And they haven't for the most part since then. At the 31-yard line. The officials have come in. The uh, play clock has gone down to the double zeros there. And we don't know if that's an accident on the officials' part or an accident on the Cajuns' part. No flag, so we'll kind of blame the officials here. There, it's showing 25 now. And is just now starting. Four minutes, 35 seconds left in the third quarter. Out of the eye formation to give up the middle. That's Mossick. Mossick gets to the 43-yard line. Sean Coleman again with a stop. Coach Weatherby is on the sidelines there. You, you can see he is just now leaving the field of play. He's shouting some encouragement to his defense who have all of a sudden provided plenty of holes for the running game of the Ragin' Cajuns. Here's a look at Coach Weatherby, a very, very enthusiastic coach. Gets the crowd and the players into it. Helps keep the spirits up. And there is a huge hit. Gary Brown, number 26, made sure there was no gain on that play. Well, the Aggies going to have to have more of that. Uh, or or there, it's going to be a, a, a struggle for him tonight. Boy, Brown stood him right up, didn't he? Nice wow. tackle right in the middle of the... Uh, field and he's taken on a guy that outweighs him by uh, 20 30 40 pounds 
We mentioned Kenyon Cotton didn't go backward very often, but he did on that play. Third down, one yard to go. And that's Cotton again. And he squeezes forward again of about three yards. First down. As the ball is now on the 48-yard line. Now the Cajuns are knocking on Aggie territory. Well, it's been rare when they haven't been in Utah State territory. 93 yards for Cotton, so it's kind of become a battle between Cotton and uh, Utah State's Abu Wilson for the rushing figures tonight. First and ten out of the eye formation. Cotton and Mossick. The fake to Cotton to give to Mossick, but Paul Gustafson was there. A loss of about six yards on the play. Some negative yardage puts the Cajuns all the way back to their own 41-yard line. Make that a loss of seven, so it brings up second and 17. Take a look at that play again. The defense penetrated all of the blocking holes, and there's Gustafson, who has made several tackles this evening in just that manner. One-on-one, -on -one, grabs the legs, and the runner does not get away. Second down, 17. Ball's on the 41-yard line. Lone setback is caught in fake. Throw out to Richard. First time we've seen him tonight at the 46-yard line. Still not to the original line of scrimmage. Paul Gustafson again on the play for the Aggies. That was the 14th play for USL in the second half, and 11 of the 14 have been running plays. The last one was a running play, but trying to get to the outside, and the Aggies spread it out. This time, DeLone throws it. Richard makes the catch, but it's not worth a lot. The pound-ahead running game, for the most part, has been the best thing. Big third down play. Third down, 12 yards to go. In motion, that's Richard. Nowhere to go. He just hurls it down the field, going for Richard, who fights off McMillan, but drops the ball. But they're going to bring it back anyway, because there was a holding, obvious holding call, when Gustafson was drawing a line on the quarterback and was grabbed by one of the offensive linemen right out in the open. Very obvious, although Richard almost made a great play on that. Jake DeLone just hurled the ball down the field, and it was Donald Richard was able to rest away the uh, the coverage there, but unable to come up with the ball, but it wouldn't have counted anyway. And as the Aggies <coughs> decline the penalty, it is fourth down. Holding on the offense, penalty declined, fourth down. Fourth down and 12 yards to go. Take a look at this play again and watch Gustafson. You see the uh, hold there that freed DeLome to pass. And so now we've got the punting unit on board. Kevin Alexander back standing on his own 12-yard line. A minute 39 seconds left in the third period. Alexander takes it on the 17. Looking for some room. Doesn't find much. Falls forward to the 22-yard line. And if I'm right, the clock did not tick at all. We've still got a minute 29. We will take a break. Score is tied 17 to 17. It's a thriller in the Big West Conference. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We've got a tight one here in Logan, Utah. Big West Conference co-champs of a year ago are battling it out 17 to 17 here just at the end of the third quarter. Uh, also a little dueling field position. The Aggies now have the ball following the punt to the 23-yard line. Look at head coach Charlie Weatherby. A win tonight brings him even up at 15 wins with 15 losses this in his third season. But he is 10 and 4 in Big West Conference games. Ivy Russell in motion. First down 10. Profile Greer and there are just simply a lot of people over on that side. He was not unable to find any room. Joe Bailey there providing uh, most of the coverage there on on Profile that knocked him out of bounds. Looks like the offensive line just did a little blocking scheme where everybody took a step to the right. Unfortunately, the USL front people did the same thing and slid with the flow and every possible lane was closed and uh, thus there's really no game. Loss of about three on the play, second down 13. Single set back again is Greer, three wide outs to the left side. 
Greer provides a block that saves Matt Wells temporarily, and Wells is forced out of bounds for a loss again. This time, another three yards. Jeff Mitchell forces Wells out. Loss of about two and a half yards on the play. We've been going backwards. I thought for just a second that the play was actually designed to be a handoff. And Wells turned and saw uh, number 40 coming at him and thought, well, maybe I shouldn't give it to Profail. I'll, I'll keep it <laughs> and, and run the other way <laughs> because uh, it was very well defended. And boy, they, they continue to blitz with those outside people. Unable to pick that one up as a look at Matt Wells' numbers. 117 yards. Has been able to keep the ball out of the defender's hands, however. No interceptions tonight. And that is one of the big reasons why Utah State has been able to stay in this game, 17 to 17. Wells back to pass, whistles are blowing. And the clock is down to zeros again. So that'll be five yards in the southern direction. As the Aggies have taken the ball, they started with it at the 23. They are now at the 13. 10 yards in the reverse direction. Third down. I mentioned Matt Wells is averaging 135 yards passing again. And back in Salisaw, Oklahoma, an all-star in both baseball, football, and basketball. Profile Greer in motion. Third and very long. Wells has nowhere to go. He's going to try to use some speed, but unable to elude the arms of Clifton Sylvester, 288-pound junior. Yeah, they, they think they uh, had in mind to try to fool him this time with a draw with the quarterback. A step two or three back, step up and try to find a, an opening, but uh, really not there, or he closed up as quickly as it was there. Nate Morreale is uh, about to establish residency down there inside the 10-yard line. He's been there quite a bit. The seconds are winding down here in the fourth quarter. We've got eight left and ticking. Morreale will get the punt off. Nearly blocked. But Damon Mason takes it at the 44-yard line. A little bumping in with his uh, coverage, or his, his blocking, excuse me, at the 49-yard line. Mason is able to get back into Aggie territory where the Cajuns will start her off first and 10. It's the end of the third quarter. We begin the fourth quarter, still tied up 17 to 17. We're back at the beginning of the fourth quarter, 17 to 17. Utah State able to escape the dangerous third quarter that has plagued them in just about every game so far this season. They were able to score three points, held the opposition to zero. But the Cajuns now have, has, has Cotton muscles his way all the way to the 35-yard line. Spencer Wagner with a tackle. I was just getting ready to say how USL was able to start this quarter off in Aggie territory, and now they have driven deeper still. Well, the Aggies have not mustered. Let's watch Cotton on the play. And again, the, the blocking up front for USL continues to be effective. They have not, the Aggies offensively, have not put together as many yards in the second and third quarters together as they had in the first. That's one of the problems. The other one is they haven't solved this blocking scheme yet of the runners. There goes Cotton again. Cotton again muscles his way to the 19-yard line. Wagner and Scow forced to save the touchdown. They're marking it now at the 18-yard line. A little bit of deja vu. We talk about how Utah State needs to stop the run, and they have been unable to do so. Oh, Boy, goodness, acres. look at that. There's no blue jerseys around there for the few instances that it took him to get downfield. Well, the offensive line able to create that gaping hole for Kenyon Cotton. Cotton again, again, muscles ahead, gain of about five. Neil Robinson with a stop for Utah State. But the coaching staff for USL has obviously seen something that the Aggies have thus far been unable to adjust to. You know, it's almost like uh, Carlton after an exciting first quarter for Utah State and still a tight football game. We've all, we're almost settling back into the mode of the defense having to hold everybody out because the offense is starting to sputter again for Utah State. Fryer gains about a yard, falls forward. Dave Balls, David Gill with a stop for Utah State. That brings up a third down and five situation. The ball is on the 13-yard line. As the Cajuns play musical, musical receivers and musical backfield, they've switched about three or four players on this particular play. 
We'll see Mossick when we get back. There's Mossick. Ron Thomas, Richard in the backfield. Cotton, where he has been mostly, unless he's uh, running through the Aggie defense. Gallom, a wide open Mossick. Touchdown, southwestern Louisiana. Uncovered. Steve Mossick came off of the right side and found open territory, and Jake DeLome found him. Cotton uh, cutting down Danilo Robinson to give DeLome a little more time. Boy, a mixed up coverage on that one, and the tie is broken. On the Aggie defense, all of a sudden on those last four or five plays, looked like they were extremely tired. Mike Schaefer in for the extra point. He's only missed one all year. And makes this one. And so the University of Southwestern Louisiana's Ragin' Cajuns jump out to a seven-point lead here as we begin the fourth quarter. 24-17 to 17 is your score. We'll be back right after this. The Ragin' Cajuns are taking the field, set to kick the ball off. They have just taken a seven-point lead in this game. The Cajuns are 3-1 and one in the Big West Conference. They have one game, one conference game remaining after this one, and then they will know their fate. Utah State's kind of on the other side of their conference schedule. They're only 1-1. One and one. They have several more hurdles to clear, providing they clear this one. Both coaches have expressed the need for this game. This is a must-win situation for both teams. Five plays, 51 yards. That was all on the ground except for the pass at the end of it. They're, they're living with the running game right now. And the ball squirts out of bounds. The flag will fly. And the Aggies will have the option to take over the 35-yard line. They tried that pop-up again. I tell you what, every time uh, Southwestern Louisiana kicks the ball, we ought to have the infield fly rule in effect because the ball just pops right up to the tight end. And so the Aggies will take over. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. 13 minutes, 5 seconds left in the game. Out of bounds, 35-yard line, first down. Well, Matt Wells and the Utah State offense take the field. Sean Turner, Ivy Russell, Kevin Alexander, the receivers. Abu Wilson in the backfield for Utah State. 65 yards from their goal. Abu Wilson met behind the line of scrimmage. Clifton Sylvester, a loss of about three yards on the play. 288 pounds to Abu Wilson's, Abu Wilson's 191 pounds. And that is the result. Second down and 12. Ivy Russell leaves the game. There's a look at Clifton Sylvester out of Bro Bridge, Louisiana. And if I'm right, I think that is the home of the International Crawfish Festival, Craig. You gotta head down there someday. Call our travel agents. I've had crawfish in Louisiana. Very good. Uh -huh. Matt Wells forced to get rid of the ball. It bounces out of the hands of Kevin Alexander and into the hands of Novich Hunter, <laughs> who is now an eligible receiver. He is an eligible receiver. And, uh, but that's a loss of about three yards on the play. Let's oh, take a look at how this develops. Right. Now it's tipped up. There's Novich, 57 on the ground. Uh, obviously has to have good hands. He came here to play basketball. He used to play at St. Peter's on the eastern seaboard. Yeah. Another look at it. It's tipped. It's going to be loose. And then we're going to see Novich grab it with his left arm and go down. That makes him eligible. Oh, oh my. Took him a while to figure that out, didn't it? Well, they're saying he was an ineligible receiver off the bobble. And uh, they're sorting this out. Maybe one of the officials did not see that Alexander touched the ball first. I think we might get some uh, explanation. Five yard penalty and a loss of down. Ooh. It will be third down. Maybe we are well, misunderstanding the rule because I thought the ball was... If anybody could grab it, yeah. that kind of thing had happened. The quarterback can grab it after, uh, after a bobbled ball. It's live, it's fair, but it's not happening right now. It's third down. 
Third down and 20. The loss of down and the penalty puts the Aggies back on their 25-yard line. As we have finally sorted out through the mess, 12 minutes, 6 seconds left in this game. And the Aggies seem to be holding up with whatever their play is. Now the clock starts again. This is the, uh, I think, the fourth time in the second half the Aggies have had the ball fifth time. And the second or third drive when they scored the field goal was the longest drive of the night. But they didn't get across the goal line. Abu Wilson in the backfield. Matt Wells chased out of the pocket. Actually wasn't even able to get out of the pocket before Clifton Sylvester and Derek McKinley wrapped themselves around him. Loss of about five yards on the play. And back comes the Utah State punting unit. Matt Wells didn't have much time to even find, a re find the first receiver, much less check off to number two and three. And so as the clock ticks with 11 minutes and 25 seconds and counting, Utah State punts the ball away. Again, with uh, that's Nate Morreale, a busy man tonight. Damon Mason, a beautiful punt. Damon Mason gets it on the 33-yard line, and that's met by Tyrone Trimble, Todd Wilson. Who else was all through there? Corey Alexander. Beautiful coverage from the Utah State punt team. The Cajuns will take over on the 36-yard line, their own 36. As we battle for field position again. Jake Delome back in the huddle for the Cajuns. A touchdown here would make it awfully difficult for the Aggies. They have not failed to get into Utah State territory the second half. Johnny Williams was right there. But uh, again, Kenyon Cotton muscles forward, picks up about four yards on the play. Make that five. With the, the turn of events here a little bit in the second half, you wonder if these big offensive uh, line people are just sort of wearing down the Aggies front. I mean, Matt Hawk at 235 is not the world's biggest uh, defensive tackler. So Cotton well over 136 yards. That's 100 yards over his average. <laughs> There was some muscle there. Steve Mossick unable to find room. Lonnie Johnson for the Aggies. Blocking the hole and making the back. Actually, no gain. No gain on that play. Lonnie's only a little over 240 yards. He's the guy that's been coming in all night for David Bowles. And Ben Crosland is also in there. And, and Crosland at, what, 240. The Aggies are undersized against this big, this big front for USL. Third down and four. Cotton and Mossick. Mossick gets the ball. Trimble forces him to the outside. Nice open field tackle. Gary Brown saved the first down. When the play goes to the outside, when it's strung out a little bit, and the Aggies get to be a little more athletic, then things go a little better defensively, it seems like. Here's uh, Mossick with the pitch. Gary's just sliding right along the line of scrimmage. He's always been able to run, and he makes a great play there for the Aggies. Well, brings out the punting unit. Kevin Alexander standing on his 20-yard line. That was last where the Aggies saw the ball. And so after three defensive plays and a nice job of the defense. Oh, my oh boy, there it goes into the end zone. Thankfully for uh, Kevin Alexander, as he saw it kind of hold up after a couple of bounces. We will take a break. Nine minutes, 21 seconds left in this game. Do not go away. This is a huge contest. 17 to 24, Utah State. Well, the Aggies, after uh, going backward in their last offensive possession, they ended with the ball on the 20-yard line. They punted away. Three plays later, after a nice defensive stand, the Aggies have the ball back again on the 20-yard line. This time it's first and 10, though. Profile Greer back in the game. That's Ivy Russell in motion. The give to Greer. He motors ahead to pick up of about three and a half yards. Now, kind of looking ahead here, uh, if the Aggies drive the field and score to make it a one-point game, do they go for the tie or do they go for a two-point conversion? I think a tie has the same effect as a loss when you look at the standings and the tiebreaker system and so forth. So you would assume that the two-point conversion, if that thinking is correct, would be a foregone conclusion. Oftentimes, the uh, people will go for a tie if they're undefeated in the conference, but one loss here, they need the win. Both teams desperately need this win. Profel Greer through traffic. 
Able to get ahead to the 29-yard line, one yard short of the first down. It'll bring up third and one. Clifton Sylvester with a stop for the Cajuns. Eight minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Left in the game. USL 24, Utah State 17. Ivy Russell, you saw him enter the screen with the play. Matt Wells delivers it to the rest of the group. Profile Greer, the lone setback. Three wideouts along the left side. Ivy Russell, Sean Turner, and Kevin Alexander. Russell goes in motion to the right side. Excuse me, to the left side. Greer finds no room, loses two yards, brings up fourth down. Nobody blocked Alexander that time. It's, it's rare when they don't have a linebacker or a DB or a couple of them uh, blitzing on every play. And most of the time now it's paying off. And Patrice Alexander, the second team all Big West player, able to make the play happen and keep the Aggies out. I want you to, to take a look right here now. That's Alexander coming through the line, and I don't think that anybody gets much of a hand on him. In fact, he bumps right off of Holmes and chases uh, Greer down, and that's how the play winds up. Oh, we've got whistles blowing again. A timeout, southwestern Louisiana. Damon Mason was set to receive the punt from Nate Morreale. Possibly uh, not enough or too many players on the field, but we will take a break with 7 minutes, 22 seconds left in this game. Utah State down by 7 to the southwestern Louisiana Region Cajuns. We're back, and Nate Morreale is back where he has been for most of the evening. He is standing on his own 14-yard line, set for the punt. Damon Mason on his 39-yard line to receive the punt. Morreale gets off a nice hanging punt. Mason takes it at the 34-yard line, brought down at about the 41. Spinning through the tacklers, and USL has nice field position with just over seven minutes left in this game. Well, there's a real need now for the Aggie defense to duplicate what they did the last time they were on the uh, field. Evidently a flag down. Yeah, holding call. Against USL. So the Cajuns will be pushed back a little further. There are two flags way back on the Utah State 30-yard line. We have a 10-yard penalty holding against the receiving team, post scrimmage, kick, spot enforcement, 10-yard penalty, first down. Well, that was spoken in code, but what that means is that the Cajuns will take over on their own 29-yard line, first and 10. But just looking at the way the schedule is going to go from here on out and how it's going to affect these teams, the Aggies after tonight have to go to Pacific and Nevada before hosting New Mexico State, and the Pacific assignment is not that easy. They go on the road again today and win in the conference. They're two and one. They won at Arkansas State. Uh, this is the next to the last game for USL. They, they finish up in a couple of weeks with UNLV, and as you said, Carlton, earlier, then they'll pretty well know their situation as they wait for Nevada to go to San Jose, play Utah State in Reno, and then go to UNLV. That UNLV-Nevada game in Las Vegas is looming sort of big right now. Both those teams undefeated. Seven minutes, 13 seconds left. The give up the middle. A gain of about two yards. Dave Balls with a stop for Utah State. Kenyon Cotton, a busy man tonight, but a successful one. His running has put the Ragin' Cajuns where they are on the scoreboard, which is seven points up, 24 to 17. Six minutes, 50 seconds and counting left in this game. USL with the ball on their own 27-yard line. And again, they just want to go to what's earned them this much. Run it, run out the clock. Kenyon Cotton met by David Gill. This time Cotton only gets about a yard which the Aggies have to look at uh, being very successful. The clock is in favor of USL at this point. The Cajuns would like to burn off as much as they can. You will probably not see too many tosses into the air to risk right the clock stopping. You will also probably not see too many sweeps where the runners <laughs> head out of bounds. They only have one timeout left, which is not as significant as Utah State having three timeouts left here with six minutes to go. Third down and six, big play. Aggies would like to stop them here. Galome running, eluding the arms 
of a would-be tackler, and then the ball eludes the arms of the would-be receiver. That being number 15, Ron Thomas. Well, they, McMillan with coverage. Nice coverage there. They're going a little bit crazy on the USL sideline, trying to milk a pass interference call, and I just don't think it was there. Take a look at that again. You see DeLome elude the arms. That's Tyrone Trimble. Boy, he threw that off balance, off the wrong foot and everything else. McMillan's there, but he's trailing the receiver. There's Chuck McMillan, number 20, but it was still long and incomplete. And contrary to the pass interference call that was called against USL earlier in the game, McMillan was turning and going for the ball, which he has as much right to as the receiver does. Fourth down, six yards to go, punting situation now. And we see the punt. Kind of a line drive kick that Alexander will let bounce and will stay away from. 21-yard line, the ball is down. Utah State will take over. Five minutes, 48 seconds left in this game. Plenty of time for an Aggie drive, should they be so inclined. There is Matt Wells getting his instructions from the sideline as to what to do next. The Aggies have been able to, as we mentioned earlier, elude some of the disasters that have taken place in second halves and previous games. The Aggies are in a position to win this one. Their second drive of the second half led to their only score of the second half, a field goal. And on that drive, Wells made two big plays, getting rid of the ball under pressure. He's got to come up with that kind of thing right now. Abu Wilson in the backfield again for the Aggies. He takes the ball, works around his left, and finds about seven yards before he's muscled out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. Stops the clock at 542. John Harris with the tackle for the Cajuns. Aggies continue to go with uh, Tuioni, Holmes, uh, Griswold. I'm trying to pick out all the linemen here. Uh, Brandon Dyson, uh, the freshman who's been moved to about every position on the line, and he's a true freshman, continues to play at the one tackle spot, and Novich Hunters played most of the game at the other one. Mike Hamilton in at uh, tight end. There's Matt Wells approaching the line, facing second down, four yards to go. Ball's on the 28-yard line. That's Abu Wilson in motion to his left. Wells looks, fires, intercepted. Intercepted, that's Alexander who could go all the way. Matt Wells with a saving tackle, saves the touchdown. But the ball will be at about the six yard line. Matt Wells picked a rather poor time to throw that ball. Patrice Alexander, his third interception of the year. Here's Wells back pedaling, looking and throwing to the left. And Alexander picks it off right there at about the 34-yard line. Really two defenders between the uh, intended receiver and uh, the thrower of the ball. Here's another look at it from ground level. Boy, it was right to Alexander, too. Patrice Alexander got a birthday gift. He turns 22 tomorrow. <laughs> he will remember this for a while. The ball is at the five-yard line. Three runners in the backfield. The give is to Cotton. He muscles ahead to about the two-and-a-half-yard line. A little bit of taunting there for Eddie Davis, number 56 for Utah State. Second down and goal. Cotton, the busy man. You also have to think uh, Cotton will be very active in this drive as well. I think a quick total would show four turnovers tonight by USL, two by the Aggies. The second one here just really big right now with five minutes left. Cotton again over the top be about half a yard shy of the goal line. Bring up third and goal. As we mentioned before, Cotton is their short yardage expert. He averages 39 yards a game and they use him primarily when they need a couple or three, a couple or three big yards. And he has been able to provide a lot more than that this evening. But right now they only need a little bit less than one yard. And again to give to Cotton. He does not make it. Does not make it. Probably picked up about a foot on that play, but is shy of the goal line. Brings up fourth and goal. Deloma's saying, let's go for it. And there's some indecision on the sideline here. The coach has said, we will kick it now. So that brings on the foot of Mike Schaefer. Earlier, he broke the school record for field goals consecutively, 10 for 10 this season. He missed the last one of last season, so started off with a clean slate this year. This is about as short a field goal as there is. Up and good. And the Cajuns take a 10-point lead with 3 minutes 51 seconds left in this game. Mike Schaefer now 11 for 11. 
That was a 17-yard uh, field goal. That puts the Cajuns up by two scores. Now the Aggies have to score quickly and then score again. Three minutes, 51 seconds left. We'll see the arm of Matt Wells. We'll see the receiving of folks like Sean Turner, Kevin Alexander, the big play man as well. Well, we've seen uh, in a couple of games we've done this year, we know Wells has an arm. He has a very strong arm. Uh, a couple of scores have come off some, like what we call them, the, the biz, trick plays, but they're going to need something like that and uh, in in duplicate, really. And the big thing is Matt Wells is going to need enough time behind the line of scrimmage to be able to find those uh, first two receivers. Something that has come and gone in spurts this evening. Sometimes Matt Wells has been able to. Sometimes he hasn't. Sometimes he's been able to read the blitz. Sometimes he hasn't even had enough time to adjust for that. Another thing that the Aggies have done this year, you remember the Alexander return against Colorado State for a touchdown. Well, he's back there with uh, Profail Greer now. That's a quick way to change the complexion of a game, the kicking game. Mike Schaefer set to kick for the Cajuns. Both Alexander and Greer are standing on their own five-yard line. More importantly, Mike Hamilton is standing on his 29-yard line, and that's where all these kicks have gone, these little short pop-ups. Hamilton again picks it up at the 20, and he motors ahead to about the 29, maybe falls forward to the 30, where the Aggies will take over. They're trying to keep keep it away from uh, their big play men. Well, it's smart football, and it's worked tonight. Uh, for the most part, Alexander hasn't been, you know, a factor in the game. He had one really nice return, but they just they just kept away from him. Three minutes, 47 seconds left. Aggies are 10 points down. Matt Wells turning in a fairly decent night. That interception, however, hurt on the last drive. See what Matt's able to come up with now. First and 10. The give to Greer. Through traffic. Pick up of about three and a half, maybe four yards before Joe Bailey brings down the 191 pound or 185 pound Greer. Clock is ticking now. Three and a half minutes. Second down. Six yards to go after the four yard pickup. Again, Greer the lone setback up at the top of the screen. Ivy Russell and Kevin Alexander. Greer goes in mo motion to the left side. Nowhere to go. Matt Wells will run it himself. He's got the first down and more. Gets to about midfield, just shy. Brought down by Orlando Thomas. But the Aggies do get up to midfield. And stop the clock with 3.10 left on the first down run. It's not re it looked like a quarterback draw. Maybe that was the design all the way. And whatever the case, a nice run by Matt. The clock will start again as soon as the chains are set. The three, that is, started now. Three minutes, six seconds. Wells barking out orders. First and ten. Balls at midfield. Wells rolls out to his right side. Tosses out of bounds. Sean Turner was covered, and he really just kind of threw it out so that nobody else could get it, and also well, it stopped the clock. Yeah, Tim Stensley did as good a job as you can do. Uh, he stayed step for step, and when Turner turned to the sideline, he stepped in front of him, so there's no way that pass was going to be completed. So the clock has stopped with two minutes and 58 seconds now. It's second down. Kevin Alexander, Ivy Russell at the top of the screen. At the bottom of your screen, that's Sean Johnson and Sean Turner. In the backfield is Profile Greer. He blocks. Matt Wells has nowhere to throw to. He's on the run, and he will not make it past the line of scrimmage. Patrice Alexander utilizes his speed, chases down Matt Wells. That's Patrice. Looks like he's down. Well, the trainers, a couple of trainers are coming onto the field. They don't know how serious the injury is. Patrice is up now, shaking up just a little bit. Two minutes, 45 seconds. The clock has stopped. It's third down. There are the fans. It's not showing much faith in the two-minute and 45-second drill here. Probably a little cool. They'll go home and watch the rest of it on KJ. I'm not sure. Let's look at uh, how many timeouts are remaining. The Aggies, uh, should they score, they will, they will need those because they will have to go for the onside kick, get the ball back, and try to utilize as few of those precious seconds as possible. 
Charlie Weatherby has seen a lot of close games in these night games. They've all seemed to have gone down to the wire. This one well, came the, down to that field goal. Yeah, the loss by four to Baylor under the lights here last year. The loss by four to Nevada under the lights here last year. The loss by, um, what was it, uh, 16 to Utah this year and by two to UNLV. And right now we got a 10-point game. Two minutes, 45 seconds left. Third down and 10. Aggies must convert here. Abu Wilson in motion to the top of your screen. Matt Wells looks to Abu first. Rolls out to his right side. And off the bobble, that's Hamilton. And he muscles ahead for the first down. A huge play. Off the bobbled pass. Garrett Johnson, number 19, is the guy who slapped it. He thought he'd done his job. And really he had, except uh, there was another Aggie there to do his job. There's Wells. The throw, the tip. Now we try to find the ball. Turner was the intended receiver. Hamilton has to get yeah. across the next line, and he did so, making for a first down for the Aggies at the 39-yard line. Wells looks, fires out of bounds. There was pressure in the backfield. That was number 48, Jeff Mitchell, forcing Wells. Uh, Wells knew he didn't have much time. He needed to get rid of the ball, so he just fired it out of bounds. The nearest receiver was Kevin Alexander. Nowhere to go. Alexander again covered tight by Tim Sensley. Well, we came into this game knowing that the two secondaries were better in units, both of them, and we're seeing it from the USL now. Second down and 10. Kevin Alexander, Ivy Russell along the left side. Profile Greer in the backfield. Matt Wells turns, fires, has no room, just has to get rid of the ball and was fortunate to do that. It was Mitchell again in the backfield. Matt Wells is a little upset. I wonder if he's uh, asking for a roughing the passer penalty. Not going to get it. Third down and 10. Back again at this situation. Aggies have the ball at the 39-yard line. Actually, maybe the 38 and a half. But they have to get into the end zone in order to stay alive in this game. Mike Hamilton brings the play in as Sean Johnson leaves the game. Sean Turner, Kevin Alexander, Ivy Russell all running over to the left side. Time clock to two now. Just got it off. Again, Matt. The ball was loose. We'll see what they call that. I have not seen any indication yet. Maybe it's just because the Aggies the Aggies, I guess, probably recovered the fumble there. Looks like it was a loose ball. Profile Greer was able to fall on it. Matt Wells just didn't have enough time to find the receiver. He was being chased all around the backfield. Tried to get rid of the ball. Ball popped loose. Forward motion brings up fourth down. The clock is ticking with two minutes now remaining. Take a look at that play again. See if we can uh, see what happens. Watch here. number 48 at the top of the screen there. He's going to bowl over two Aggies and then into Greer and then into Wells and finally had a hand in the, the fact the ball was knocked away. Three, three straight plays that Jeff Mitchell has altered. Matt Wells runs, fires a two-hopper to Sean Johnson, and that's it. That was a fourth down attempt. The Ragin' Cajuns will take over on about the 49-yard line. Seems to be some discussion, but both teams are uh, switching. No flags down that I can see. Well, maybe there is a flag. And the Cajun coaches are saying decline whatever it is. Illegal substitution on the offense. Penalty is declined. That's the first down for the defense. A minute 41 left to go in this game. Think of how this game started optimistically for the Aggies who had a 14-0 lead after a quarter and a half. Then, or since then, it's been 20 Seven to three for USM. For the Aggie fans, uh, once they saw those first 14 points tick on the board, they had to be very optimistic that this was going to be the renaissance of yet another season. This was the magic weekend a year ago. Well, the Aggies are saying they've picked up a fumble. I don't know that the officials are agreeing. Now, See what's going on down there. The officials are talking amongst themselves. And the Aggies have recovered the fumble. 
Watch it here on the replay. Well, Johnny Williams just took it right out of the runner's hands. It is a Utah State ball. It was a fumble, and the Aggies were on it. Well, there's an interesting turn of events that uh, makes the end of this game a little interesting. A minute and a half left as the Aggies have a little bit of a second life here. At least it keeps us from having to call a game where everybody just puts their knee down and we let the seconds pick away. <laughs> we'll see what happens here. A minute 31, first and 10 on the 46-yard line. Abu Wilson now in the backfield. Matt Wells turns and fires incomplete. That was Ivy Russell, unable to get a hand on the low pass. Wells just doesn't have enough time to set up with a nice five to seven step drop and see what's going on downfield. He's having to go with these short receivers, not short in stature, but short in distance from the, uh, from the line of scrimmage. Although Ivy Russell is 5'7". Sean Turner is who he'd like to find. Also Kevin Alexander. They're the ones running the deep routes. Second down and 10. Matt looks and fires over the middle of the field to uh, Sean Turner in the Cajun territory, but it's only a pickup of five yards. Tim Sensley providing the coverage. Turner started that route as if it was a sprint to the flag, then he cut across the middle quickly and was open. Abu Wilson in motion. He goes in behind Turner. Wells looks and finds a wide open Sean Johnson, who steps out of bounds at the 32-yard line, stops the clock with 56 seconds remaining. Johnson was wide open on that play. Take a look at the uh, replay here. No one covering him. Almost his momentum almost carried him out of bounds. Able to step so at the 32, stops the clock. Johnson fixing the footwear there. 16-yard gain and uh, less than a minute to go. Ball on the 32-yard line. Three wide outs to the left side. Abu Wilson in the backfield. Team motors over to the right side. Wells has time now, and he will try to elude the grasp with the defenders. He gets about a five-yard pickup. If he just could have eluded the grasp, that was number 96, Joseph Evans. I know Wells saw a little bit of daylight ahead of him, at least enough for a first down. But not so now. It was about a six-yard pickup. Brings up, let's see, about three yards away. For the Cajuns, uh, that's how they spell it down there in Louisiana. And actually, we can say Louisiana. Go, Cajuns. Got a few players from uh, Bro Bridge, spelled the same way. You know, we looked at the comparative scores between Utah State and Louisiana Tech and uh, Louisiana Tech and USL. They won, USL won at Louisiana Tech by 13-3 or something like that. The Aggies win at Louisiana Tech 7-3. And we're talking about really, I could say safely, the two best defenses in the, in the conference in Utah State and USL. And we thought it might be that kind of a game, a low-scoring game. The score isn't low, but the totals are. Right now, we have unofficially University of Southwestern Louisiana at 303, and the Aggies 250 total yards. So, not a lot of yardage tonight. The Aggies need about uh, 26 of them right now to be in any kind of a position to uh, make this very interesting in the middle. Off over the hands of Sean Johnson. Trying to catch it at around the 15-yard line. That would have been a first down. Brings up third down now. Third down and about four. 40 seconds left in this game. Ivy Russell comes in. Sean Johnson exits as they trade off duties, bringing the plays in. And all three wideouts head to the left side. Kevin Alexander, Sean Turner, Ivy Russell, Profel Greer in motion to the right side. Finds Profell up the middle. He can use his speed to get into the end zone, possibly, but he's stopped short, seven yards shy. The clock will stop at 33 seconds while the chains are moved down to that end of the field. Interesting play where you saw him going in motion. He tried to kind of get lost and started back across the line of scrimmage the other way. And uh, there was actually a little bit of an opening more to the outside. Matt Wells stops the clock. 
29 seconds, so it's second down and goal at the seven yard line. Trying to see what happens here as Matt Wells gets his instructions from the sideline. Matt Wells again, the sophomore quarterback, taking the reins from Anthony Calvillo of a year ago. Matt Wells out of Salisaw, Oklahoma. Six feet tall, 190 pounds. Look at head coach Charlie Weatherby. Boko Greer again in motion to the right side. Wells looks for Greer. Looks for another receiver and just throws it over the head. The nearest receiver was Sean Johnson. One of those plays where nobody's open. Get rid of it and try it again. 24 seconds now remain. New play coming in, courtesy of Ivy Russell. The tight end Mike Hamilton leaves the game. So now it's third down and goal. Ball is at the seven-yard line. 24 seconds remain. Both are agree in the backfield. Madwell rolls and finds Sean Turner. Sean unable to hang on. Would have been a spectacular grab, and he might have even been out of bounds by the time he caught it anyway, but Sean Turner unable to hang on to the ball. 20 seconds now. Probably one of the smaller wide receivers wouldn't even have gotten to that one. Turner's a wiry, tall guy. What a stretch. Ooh, he had a foot in bounds when he came down, but he didn't have the ball. Another look at it. Boy, he had to stretch out to catch that or get a, even have a chance to catch it. Well, it's fourth down and goal. Game comes down to this. 20 seconds left. Rear again in motion. Wells back. Looks, he's got open field if he wants to take it himself. And he finds Sean Turner for a touchdown. As 12 seconds remaining, Matt Wells rolled out, looked like he was going to run it, drew the coverage in, and Sean Turner was able to find the room and make the snag. Wells dropping back, steps up, looks, runs to the left. There was a question for a minute if he was over the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball. That tossed him to the corner of the end zone. Turner's waving at him. I'm all along. And Wells uh, delivers it right at the back of the end zone. Turner again trying to keep his feet in bounds and does a good job. Well, the Aggies now with 12 seconds remaining. Will go for two as they want to get to within a uh, get to a position to where possibly a field goal could win this. So 23 to 27, four points down. They line up on the three yard line. Wells with a quick pass and it's good. The conversion is good to Sean Johnson. And so now the Aggies are down by two points, 25 to 27. Still 12 seconds on the clock. You almost have to bet your paycheck that we're going to see an, uh, an onside kick here. Johnson was the slot man. He went down and curled to the outside, right along the line of scrimmage, and made the catch right there. Well, the Aggies have made this interesting. But with 12 seconds, 12 seconds remain, there's not much time for the Aggies to do much of anything, but you can almost guarantee that the onside kick is coming. And all of the sure-handed receivers for USL are now taking the field. We've got uh, the tight end, Cody Romero, Donald Richard, their leading receiver. He is up there, as well as Franco Smith, another wide receiver, Darren Struther. They're all along the front lines. There is only one man who is uh, beyond about 10 yards from uh, where, the, where the receiving team can line up. That's number nine, Damon Mason. He's ready just in case the Aggies surprise them somehow. Well, we'll see what happens, to which side they go. All righty, looks to be going to the left-hand side, to the top of your screen. Mike and Nora got the nice bounce, and the ball is loose, out of bounds, last touched by the Cajuns. Bounced out of bounds, got up in the air, got the height that you want to off of that second bounce on an onside kick. Here's Knorr, just a one-step approach, and he gets it. Really, it's the kind of kick you want, and the Aggies have some people in position, but they can't control it. It's, it's spinning too hard and moving too fast. Nobody did, and so it becomes you SL ball. And Corey Alexander, if he'd uh, been about uh, maybe six to eight inches taller, might have been able to come down with that. 
It's all academic from here. 12 seconds remain. Jake Lohm puts the knee down. Uh, no, not, no time has ticked off the clock here. I think the University of Utah and a couple other teams that have been to Romney Stadium so far this year can understand what's going on. Okay, now it's ticking away. And the Aggies have taken a timeout with five seconds left. Utah State takes the timeout. There's five seconds remaining. The crowd is really starting to thin out at this point. Now they have put five seconds back on the clock. There's 10 seconds remaining, but it's only a second down. They put the knee down one more time. Utah State can use its last timeout, and then with the uh, third down play, uh, that will end the game. Unless the Yankees are hoping for a rare fumble on one of these plays. You've got the deep man, Donald Richard. He is back. He's out of the screen. Uh, he's the one that's designed to protect everything. There you go. He looks like he's going to punt the ball, but he's just there to make sure nothing happens. Nice flip. Look at that. Mossick. Mossick highlights. Steve Mossick. The running wow. back did a back flip to celebrate the victory. <laughs> well, the seconds will tick away. We've got six, five left, and the Ragin' Cajuns take the field victorious here at Romney Stadium. They have come away with a two-point win over the Utah State Aggies. Rage and Cajuns are now in very nice position as they have only one more conference game left. They are now 4-1 and one in the Big West Conference. The team to beat right now, Nevada 3-0, and oh, but they have some tough battles ahead of them. Well, and also UNLV is 3-0, and oh, but UNLV now goes to USL in a couple of weeks. And the uh, Cajuns can help themselves by tacking on a loss to UNLV and any tiebreaker in that situation, they'd have it over UNLV. Well, we will take a quick break here, come back with some post-game thoughts, some statistics, tell you what happened and why. 27 to 25, your final here in Logan, Utah. <laughs> 